Keep on time back into destination. <laughs> Ancient, hidden, forgotten. So one day we'll get we'll get this Leonard on the Twitch chat to. too. I was trying to explain to Leonard how uh, how what we see is gets embedded into a split down and that gets broadcasted. <laughs> Harbor Town is an uh, all-new series don't from Miniature Build <laughs> Authority, the leader in tabletop Most gaming. Most people season. don't need to know that. Unique, That's true. flexible, and playable. Look at Harbor it often, Town but it, it and, works. Yep. and you broadcast. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's kind of yeah. I I I don't understand how that's done either. It's kind of a yeah. magic. So so Leonard to bad. translate JEs. He makes pretty pictures on screen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I make pretty, pretty pictures. Oh, I'll, 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 I'm going to flip after this right to the entry uh, welcome screen for Leonard, too. We're not going to do any of the other hop up. So. The good thing is that we don't really need, you only need the Twitch for the chat, not for yeah, the and, video. Yeah, uh, and because uh, everything I got it, your default set to, you are seeing what uh, everyone on Twitch is seeing. Did you, any of you guys get the battle maps that was a Kickstarter a few months ago? We just started delivering the whole thing. No. Uh, two feet by, maybe not two feet, that's a little big. Nope, that um, maybe a foot it. and a half by 12 inches. And then as you turn it page to page, it gives you different things you can adventure on. Uh, they only cost 35 bucks, actually. Was this the one that's the book where you flip the page? And yes. Okay. Oh, from the yeah. edge. I've, I've seen that one, but I, I, I have didn't, didn't back that one. It just seems to be a useful thing that, you know, if you've got uh, something on the fly, you go through the pages and you can find something that yeah. you'll do. Uh, and it might not be exact, of course, but it'll do. And uh, that's usually enough to get you through. Yeah, they've got like a coated surface where you can do like dry or wet erase on them. I, think. I imagine you can use some kind of dry erase on it. Yeah, think. you can. You can use yeah, dry erase. I don't want to find it out the hard one. I love the battle mats. I mean, I, I don't ha I don't like them hex because of our miniature style. And so my stratagem makes a winter and a spring one and a waterway. And uh, I love them. I really do. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I've used a lot of different... You know, I've used uh, dungeon tiles from Wizards of the Coast. I've used Chessex battle maps, which are wet erase. And then I have uh, the original tactiles, which are these plastic. I have them too. They are fantastic. Yeah, yeah they're these, these plastic. They're, they were they're... so expensive. Oh, God, yes. I have two sets. And they're, they're shaped like puzzle pieces. Yeah, yeah I got them. The Celestian is saying set. Mondo Mat 8x4. Is that what it was? I um, have that. Yeah. Okay. And so that's I, I have a I have a factory second that I picked up at Gen Con 2000 that I got back. In. Imagine I getting the tactiles mega set shipped to Sweden. That was like a thousand bucks or something. It was ridiculous. Oh my god. It was like it was hundreds of dollars to to get it shipped and and, and to to get those it. It was like ridiculous. But they, they those could, things are I, so heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I've had them for almost 20 years now, and they're they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Leonard, if you haven't seen them, Paizo makes these uh, flip mats that are not like the book, but like they're, they're two-sided and you can just flip yeah. it from one side to the other if you want to. Do Game, gaming paper has a new one too, a, 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 cart, a cardboard set that works like the tactics. Hmm. It seemed really, really cool. Wasn't there something that Gary Khan that someone had that was like a tactile, but... Yeah, I think gaming paper has been in many of them, and they have a whole bunch of products that works like yeah, yeah. gaming, uh, like ta tactiles. But was that was that gaming paper at Garycon? I couldn't remember who it was. I think they were there too. Yeah, oh, there, okay. there's many different. The hex one side square, the other never used the hex side. Uh, that's Mike Wilson saying that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I never really used the hex part because I never used games in that type. But yeah. I actually did a massive combat on that eight by four foot map. I had two eight foot long tables I got from uh, Office Depot that I laid it out on, and I drew a map and then covered it up. And then we did the big end of the adventure combat on that, and it was like amazing. So I had terrain basically all brought out. Yeah, it was, it was different for sure. Back in the day, we had a heavy piece of glass that was on the game table that we could put stuff under, and then we put that on top, and that created a level surface that you could draw on. Yeah. 
Rye Race, Rye Race, and, and you could use miniatures and whatever on it. So that was before we got the projector we used that. We even had it <laughs> after we had the projector too, so we could run with using a pen on top of the picture. You had a white sheet of paper under it. I have a minor Kickstarter addiction. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's nothing awesome. wrong with that, Leonard, at all. That's the, yeah, you, you're staying on top serious. of the top. What's up, Sean? What's up, Pete? Thanks. Yeah, if you if you have the if you have the money, the addiction's not bad. Yeah. So no, you're staying up on the time. I don't necessarily have the money. Even Reaper, yeah. right, Leonard? You did some of the Reaper Kickstarter, right? Yes. Uh, uh, that's uh, still coming. Oh, that's a long way off. Yeah, April 2021. Okay. I, I don't even want to tell you how much I spent. Uh, 21. And they is, that the, <laughs> is that is, is is that the pizza dungeon one? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, um, got a nice crowd already, and we're early. <laughs> Seven minutes early. So, um... How did what? that happen? <laughs> Everyone's excited about this. I think this was the most, uh, the most, uh, likes and responses on any of my, uh, uh, posts up. I mean, more, I even think more than the, the first Leonard show. Uh, uh, we got a lot of interest, so I'm hoping this is going to be a great one. I got, uh... I think it was the most followers I've ever gotten offline too between uh, between broadcasts. So I kind of uh, uh, I can thank Leonard for that too. So uh, yep. all right, let's go live. Live. We'll just uh, we'll chat a bit and uh, we'll start this thing up here and hopefully everything uh, is working well. Um, you got and you guys can hear me tonight, right? Like unlike the, unlike the other nights. Good evening. Uh, well, thank you all for hopping on. Wow, um, what a great crowd already. Almost a hundred, Leonard already. Uh, I got the the legendary Leonard Lakafka. Welcome back, and thank you for coming back. I know you're not doing a hundred percent. You're not a hundred percent right now, uh, but uh, thank you. I know uh, it's going to be an interesting conversation tonight. A little different than uh, last time. And with me, Zana Meyer and uh, Brian Blumklotz, who joined us last hey. time you were on. So uh, thanks, Leonard. Uh, so what's going on, man? What do you got? Uh, what do you got brewing and? Uh, what do you what do you want to talk to us about tonight? I know uh, I put up a title, but I know you got some uh, cool things you want to discuss. Well, I've got the uh, Laocheal thing, which uh, Josh Pop is editing, and he's also editing the, the uh, Ravaging of the Mind, which is the uh, the uh, adventure that goes with it. Yeah. Now, I don't expect anybody to draw me maps for. Um, the adventure, uh, so you're going to have to make do with um, with paint, unfortunately. Uh, I, I, I have kind of hornswoggled Ron into drawing that map that just came up. Yep, put it up so for you. will have a better version of that thing. Um, and it'll be in the uh, format that uh, Reston for 577 is in, and 575 and 576. Okay. It, it's um I know um there's a lot out there uh, uh that you're working on. Why don't you uh j just explain to everyone what like what you've been doing as far as the projects with Rotic um and uh why you decided to go to that area and um and and what what it, you know the general synopsis of of the whole idea behind going well, to the Rotic area. I didn't want to add anything to Lendor Isle. Okay. Uh, with uh, L4 and L5 already out there. Okay. And, and, and that you know, that was, you know, an amazing amount of time and energy and time and energy and time and energy uh, to finally get that done. And uh, I don't remember who my champion was. There was somebody who took the bull by the horns and got the damn thing published. Um, there was everything in his cousin in, in L5. And at one point, Somebody who was one of the editors said, it's got everything with the kitchen sink. I said, I can have one. But he didn't see the humor. <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean, it's just, the detail on this is impressive. I, I you, you just sent us over this lay keel. And I'm like, I'm just going to print this out uh, because it's a few pages. I didn't realize it was 74 pages for the town. <laughs> Brian, look, it's like a book. It's 74 yep. pages. 
I mean, every, oh, it's almost a page per room in some instances here, which is amazing, yep. the level of detail that you go into here. I mean, home district commonly called the Oval, Fisherman's Cabin, and it's like it's like an entire page there, small tower, Scrivener. I mean, it's just uh, it, uh, home st it just goes on I, and on and on. It's I just don't like, know when to shut up. Excuse me? I don't know when to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it, it's it's pretty awesome it really is um so you just decided to uh to go into rotic and uh and make well, it I, I did an adventure in radic with my groups back in chicago four years ago that i'd like to think um okay so i did something there already and I have that one mystic box that when I moved, I had like 58 or 59 cartons of stuff. And carton number 59 vanished. And apparently, it contained the background for what was now going to be L4 and, and what was to be L5. So I had to recreate L4 and L5 from memory. Oh, you never want to do that. Right. And um, I... I I changed computers and I changed computers and I changed computers and I didn't back up as well as I should. I spanked myself afterward uh, because it was an immense amount of material that got lost. And I think my uh, whatever we did in Radic got, got swept away in that too. But, so, so, uh, so my suggestion, Leonard, carbonite, offsite backup, and just have it automatically <laughs> back up in the background. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, something like that. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're old school. I mean, I do uh, everything. And uh, if you notice, like, here's here's my adventure for Thursday night in an old notebook. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, you, you have it in paper everywhere. <laughs> yep. So uh, Leonard's the same way, right? We got, you know, we like to have it. We like to have it in our hands. You know, so uh, it's it's exciting. Um, I'm going to, uh, well, well, Brian, Anno, do you have any questions for Leonard about, like, what, what this project entails? And then I'll go to the larger screen here. Yeah. He wants to... First, I have to, to congratulate uh, Leonard on the wonderful name of Leiakil. I think it's perfect for, for Ratik with their, where they're, um, with the um, kind of the association with the, the seafaring and building ships and stuff it's 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 fantastic i just love the name it's 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 well it's it seemed to be close enough to marner mm -hmm. that it is unlikely to be uh attacked by a large group of human not saying it ever won't be yeah but, um, there's too many reinforcements too close by yeah and anybody who's got any sense on the evil side might say, gee, this could be a real mistake. So in one respect, Leia Keel is under an umbrella of Marner, even though Marner is 130 miles, 125 Yeah, miles. something like that away. Yeah. That ballpark. It's a ways away, but uh, at least it's there. And there's some substantial forces there. Um, but uh, it seemed like a good place to do it. Uh, because uh, I do these adventures for uh, CAFCON, which is in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And this is the third or fourth one I've done for them. Um, so I did, uh, I did this thing, and it seems like what happened was that the, the plot of Leia Keel, uh, Ravages of the Mind, is the, uh, there's a, the, the, the uh, Chapel of Lurg outside of Laekil, a substantial distance, and then down the road the other way is uh, the Timber Way, Timber Timber Cross. Timber Cross. Yep. So anyway, switching the place gets attacked, and uh, lots and lots of people get killed. Only seven of them survive till the end, and finally the, uh, the balance of the uh, humanoids leave. Well, one guy uh, uh, literally watched his family, his his brother and their family um, die, and, and and then all of his friends and compatriots and yada yada. So uh, the seven of them are there uh, burying people and burning bodies and wonderful stuff like that, and uh, his mind just kind of snaps. Uh, 
I lost my wife, I lost my child, you know. I'm in, I'm in bad, bad shape. So he starts praying, but he doesn't start praying to Lurg anymore. He kind of sends out a general prayer message without mentioning it either. And my thought was that if you walk by a telephone and it happens to ring and you pick it up and it happens to be a demon who answers, well, there you go. So I took that approach when we ended up worshiping this demon. And in doing that, uh, he was getting some perks by the demon. So all of that goes on in the background. And now 30... Two years transpire, but before the 32 years transpire, the uh, the local gentry from Laakiel show up some number of days later, and then eventually a high priest of uh, Lurg shows up uh, almost two years later, and saying that well we're going to close this thing down. It's too too in a place where it's too vulnerable, and there I don't see <clears throat> anyone building a town here. So you guys would be on your own. And, of course, uh, Delbert, who is the, uh, the guy who lost the, the wife and kids, wife and his kid, uh, decides to, uh, oh, well, I'm going to hold it out. I'm going to uh, care for the graves and um, not necessarily keep it ship shape because it's as large as it is. And, of course, the, uh, the demon decides to help him with that. Um, he gives him his own demon. He sets up barriers between monsters that exist around the clearing so that the one set of monsters won't attack the other set of monsters. And I, I, I wrote that and I said, gee, I don't know if that's precedent or if that's not precedent, but it's what I'm going to do. So the giant ants don't run into uh, the next thing over and the next thing over doesn't run into it. It's just, um, it's like a barrier. Now, of course, the person who's coming in, they don't know uh, how to approach this place. Um, it, it appears as though that when they did get the, uh, oh, well, wait, you got to get the rest of the plot. The rest <laughs> of the plot is that uh, uh, it's 32 years since the fall of the chapel and the death of his wife and their small child. And he decides, I'm going to go into town and I'm not going to celebrate classically, but I'm going to have a good meal and a good bottle of wine, which I certainly am not getting here. He would drive into uh, Laakiel occasionally. So there are people at the trading post and a couple of other places that know him. But he would come in late in the afternoon and leave before uh, before nightfall. So he wasn't exactly a, uh, a character of renown. But he always had money. <clears throat> there was a fair amount of money left over from the, from the temple, which he just happened to not give the uh, high priest. So he has money. So anyway, he goes into town and this uh, serving maid walks up. And he looks at the serving maid, and while it's not a dead ringer for its wife, his wife, it looks a lot like his wife. Yes. And then the little girl walks up, who's three years old, and he realizes that this looks like his daughter, which wasn't really, 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 really true, but um, his mind snapped again. And so he goes and he buys a cart and what have you, and he kidnaps her and the child and heads back to uh, the, the room. And that nice, especially nasty, is a lot of rain, um, so that the uh, the people who do follow eventually are plagued by the fact that it's a big muddy mess. Uh, now, the party who went, to the best of my knowledge, they, they well, they had two priorities: one, to w bring the woman and child back. That was priority one, and priority two was to bring Delbert back to justice. And uh, if he resisted and fought them, they had the right to kill him. I don't think they ever interfaced with him. And I don't think they interfaced with a bunch of the guards. I think what they did 
because there was a, a way into one corner of the ruin and has a, uh, a trapdoor in it. And he found the trapdoor, he went downstairs, and there is the, the woman and the daughter. So they said, well, well, we're going to get our reward right here. So they packed her up and they took her back. And this was a Kafka. Really with anybody. This was a Kafka. This was at a convention. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is this Josh Pop's group running this? No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, the the guys from. Uh, okay. From, uh, um, uh, Just Kafka. want to make sure. Okay. They ran, it. and I, I I just had issues with getting the details of what happened back. It was like pulling teeth, and I wasn't successful in pulling those teeth. So I, I don't know where he left off. Now, my thought would be, when you publish this thing, and if that same thing happened, he would go back. Uh, there's no reason why he wouldn't. He had her once. Uh, he'd go back and get her again. Yeah. This time, he'd bring a rock with him. Kill a few dozen people and escape with her, and then he has to go somewhere else. He can't. Um, the the, 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 uh, the, the rune is is too dangerous at this point. Now I haven't designed any of that, and I thought I would do that for this year's uh, 2020 in in May of 2020 of. The, the woman getting captured again, and they're off again, but now they went somewhere. And he has to figure, they have to figure out where where that place is. But I would suspect he would go into town within three to six days of the woman getting rescued. Uh, it would make a world of sense. And uh, I'm going to take the attitude that the people in Lankiel didn't do any extra protection for her at all. It just well, we've got her back, and everything's fine, and she can go back to work. Well, gee, no, because he's, he's going to come back for it. Now, so, so, I say we can play that out, but we, we may. So, Leonard, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. So, when you were designing Leia Keel, did you do the town first, or did you start the adventure and then build the town out from there? Good question. I decided that I wanted to have a town that could eventually be used as a place where you uh, are born and raised and you can create adventurers from it. Mm -hmm. So I put in uh, a lot of detail. Um, even the men at arms have statistics. And you, and you did that before you started the adventure? Uh, I worked on both at the same time. Okay, okay so it's sort of, the, they kind of were mutually synergistic and you kind of went back and forth on it. Right, so I had to have a concept of what the town was, so I, I drew a map on the, on the, on the, uh, what do you call it? Graph uh, paper, hex paper? Yeah, hexagonal. Oh, paint. I'm primitive, it's paint. Okay, so oh, and paint, okay. I drew it up, but it's up there. Yeah. I can see it there, and um, I decided to uh, to uh, they they come into town. They say that she's been captured and taken away, and they get eight volunteers to uh, to go and get her the the head back and uh, to kill Gilbert. Yeah. And I think they're third to fifth level or something like that. So they should have a shot at him. Um, he may not be ready for all of the defenses he has, but so, at least a shot at it. When Leonard says he prepared Laekiel uh, along with the adventure, uh, the table of contents is four pages long. So, uh... <laughs> it's like a hardcover. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I, I well, mean, all, it's, of it's, all of that's due to Josh. Josh uh, yeah. uh, knows many more details about how to lay shit like that out on um, <laughs> <laughs> and he got it to generate uh, the the uh, the index, so he knew how to do that. 
<clears throat> I do not know how to do that, but I, I could certainly do it on, but. Yeah, but what's cool is the pre-rolls for Ravages of the Mine are in here, okay, mm -hmm. in the appendix. So you have all the pre-rolled pre characters in here. Um, you have the deities and religions of the area here uh, in Appendix 6, like Soul and Earth Thylander is in here. Um, you know, you got a lot of great stuff. I mean, the, the, the detail is unbelievable, uh, which if, if you're a detail-oriented DM, I mean, this is this is fantastic. Um you know, well, the only uh, reason I went to Radic is because it's settled by the Sioux. In their the Sioux. migration, it's one of the places where the Sioux don't bow. Um, so that way, I didn't have to create all new gods all over again, yet again, uh, or pick up uh, deities from the world of Greyhawk. I didn't get stuck with them. And I sort of apologized for a number of times um, doing Lendor Isle with virtually nobody with an outside god, a human outside god. So we didn't do Farlangan and Celestine, and we didn't do any of that. And basically it's because I wanted to play test these gods. And the only way to do that is if everybody worships them. So in real life, since there's uh, ships going back and forth over and over and over and over, there certainly would be people that would arrive that wouldn't necessarily be worshiping the Sioux of God. But I ignored that. And I said, I'm the DM, I'll do what I want. What the heck? That's my, uh, that's, that's my uh, smartphone. Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like so Admiral Mouth. Yep. I got All right, so uh, Admiral, I promise we'll get there uh, with with Restenford. Uh, we'll get to Restenford. Uh, um, he's got. Um, I just he just followed too, so I know he really wants to answer as a question asked. Rotic, I got a quick question here. Um, I'm going to go to the big one, the big map here, and I'm going to ask you this, Leonard. So on this map that Anna has made, what on this is new, and why is it there? Um, Blackfield Chapel of Lurg and Timbercross are the new pieces. Okay. Yep. Everything All that else stuff okay. exists already. Okay. Uh, can you explain Timber Cross for us just a little bit? Timber Cross is literally just a crossroads. It's a. Uh, I think I built a hexagonal building with multiple layers. I seem to recall having done. Uh, uh, it's fortified enough that if somebody attacks, they're going to have trouble doing it. Um, cool. but it's not a whole crap load of people. I don't know, eight, ten. I put a village there, so I might have to downgrade that a little bit. Mm -hmm. It could be a little fortress with a couple ha uh, houses around it, yeah, right? Like, it could be a little like live a hundred people there or something. So that's what I'm. Something to develop. It, it, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's up to Leonard on, uh, I guess, you know. On yep. well, you, you've got, it's, it's well-placed relative to three other towns, as you'll notice. You have Laakiel and whatever those other two places are called, yeah. Ad Abinoth or something, and then the Stenger. Yep. yep. I may be saying those wrong. That's right. So there would be a source of, uh, I want to go from Stenger to Abinoth, I want to go from Stenger to yeah. Laakiel, and I might go through Timbercross and I might not. Okay. So yeah. you would and get traffic. You would get traffic. Yeah, it's a good stopover for for having a little inn exactly. or something. That exactly. could, that's why you that's yep. why you put a tavern or an inn. Mm -hmm. uh, where I learned that trick was, did you guys read the Belgarian by uh, what's his name? It'll dawn on me. Uh, it's in a set of five books written quite some time ago. Eddings, David Eddings. It's oh, probably the Lord of the Rings, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it does. Deep, very deep character development. Um, it opened a lot of doors. It opened up uh, the, the door to a, uh, a, uh, a location that had uh, centurion type guards. And what they did is they walked 20 miles, they built an inn, they fortified it. They walked 20 miles, they built it in, they fortified it. Figuring that travelers 
would be more than happy to see that place at the end of 20 miles. Yeah. So the, uh, these, these uh, roadways travel through a number of other um, provinces. Uh, it involves uh, a battle of, I think it's seven gods, maybe it's eight. Um, and one of them, um, one god steals a, a treasure from the other god and it all goes to hell over centuries involving. Uh, and the king of the, of, of the town is slain, but he successfully uh, throws his child overboard into the ocean, but the child gets caught uh, by a friendly neighborhood uh, eagle, I think. Uh, it's a well-written series, um, and I recommend it highly. The second set of books, they did another five after that, were all right, but it kind of recapitulated what they did in the first set. So you went through a lot of stuff, and then you went through that stuff again, sort of. Um, but it's called the Belgariad, um, and I just the, the name of the author is right off the tip of my tongue. I don't remember. Yeah, Eddings. According Eddings. to the real program, it's Eddings. Yeah, David and, Eddings. and uh, online, he says he loves it as well. So there you got a. You got at least one fan out there who, uh, uh, and you say it's better than Lord of the Rings, and uh, yes, good. Yeah. That's right. It does a different approach to the whole thing, but it does a similar approach. Okay. Uh, vast armies from multiple countries to uh, attack uh, this god who is not fully dead, but mostly dead, and they've got to go and get back this jewel. Um, and they succeed and pull it off, and of course the god gets just just a little bit pissed. He destroys the entire complex uh, where he's been living, and all of his compatriots have been living, um, just to say, "Hey, you know, uh, I got damaged when I stole this thing in the first place, and now you let someone come in and steal it from me. So, hell with you, literally." So, um, yes, you have, I mean, you're meant, you base a lot of, you know, you get some of your ideas from that, which is super cool. Um, did, uh, did that assist you when you made, and we may have asked this last time, I don't remember the soul deities, did that help a lot with that? Or did that was just this inspiration? Well, no, not really. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I created and named all the soul deities and then. Gygax got to go in and uh, edit. And his edits were pretty small, actually, but he did do it. Um, for example, I had uh, Grell, but since there was a monster named Grell, he turned around yeah. and learned. And I had a, a deity who was named Oberon, and he turned it around and made it Mariba. So he did those little things, but those were minor things. The only objection I had was, uh, which he didn't tell me he was going to do, which was his prior. He um, created standard divine powers, and they wouldn't have been the set of standard divine powers that I would have created for the Sioux Indian. But it was in print. What, what am I supposed to do? So the stat blocks in Dragon Magazine for the Sioux deities were Gygax? No. I gave him the copyright to it. Because mm. I wrote it, but I gave him the copy. So there wouldn't be any argument about somebody trying to... Oh, no, I'm talking about the, the DD stats that he gave to the deities. Was that no, him? No, all of that. All of it. Okay. All of it. He just named them. No, I named them. Yeah. Uh, but they did go in as named deities in uh, World of Prayer. I think in the first and second book. But I fleshed them out. I said, you know, here you have the Sioux migration, and that was a, a big deal uh, in the history of Oith. And um, I, I always say it, Oith, but I realize it. <laughs> um, and I said, well, you know, I'll tackle that, and I'll create them. And 
they're sort of uh, Norse, German, deities, sort of, kind of. Mm -hmm. They're certainly not Egyptian. They're not Greek. They're not Roman. They're, they're, they're none of that. More, more Northern European. Yeah, more than Northern European. So with like, and I know you pronounce it Ouija, and everyone else pronounces it Ouija, but the correct pronunciation is Ouija. Uh, do you at least, um, do you take pride in that? That's a major deity to this day. A lot of them are. A lot of them are, are yeah. really in the game, even with the 5E. They're in. I mean, so, and they're your creations. So. Well, well Ouija, Ouija has the, <clears throat> the double duty of being the goddess of magic and death. And a lot of people think, oh, well, she's evil as hell. No, she's yeah. there to protect the dead, not to uh, necessarily uh, produce new dead, but she's capable of it. She can animate dead. Um, oh, where'd you get a picture of that? Oh, uh, <laughs> you, you mean, you mean, uh, you're, you're, okay, oh, here, I got a little surprise for you, Leonard. <laughs> I was going to save it. Not getting All right, there. so, um, let me show you something here. Hmm, okay. I just mailed those pieces to, um, who did I mail those to? You mailed them to me. Oh, well, then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to tell you. You repaint them. We're going to go off a little tangent here that he saw him. All right. So Leonard mails me this set of, of and these pieces were unpainted. It was, I guess it was from a Kickstarter you did. And right. they're, they're, um, they came and some of them were broken. No big deal. So Bill's not on. So Char Scorn, I call him Bill the Master Crafter. The, he went in, he painted them up, he adorned them, he put stuff inside them and made them look really nice with all the, you know, accoutrements that you see here. But I asked him to do something special for you, Leonard. And uh, I wanted to pay homage to your greatest character of all time. And here we go. And uh, your greatest character of all time has put the graffiti on one wall. So it says Leomund was here on the wall. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> you know, more people have, have taken that man and put him places where he wasn't. Well, <laughs> but, well... I, I did uh, in Earth Journal number ten. Ten, yes. Wrote Leoman's life. Yep. Uh, and it's nothing quite like um, what they uh, accuse Leoman of doing. But uh, Leoman was on really good terms with uh, with Lindor. We spent a few years together. Um, and at first, I was going to do that to escape the Greyhawk Wars which I, I hate with a vengeance because mm -hmm. it was Gygax's world and uh, the woman who took over TSR decided to piss on everything and everybody who was an ally of Gary's. So um, it was very disappointing to me seeing what they did to my Lendor Isle with, of course, no input from me whatsoever. Yeah. The elves invaded it. Well, the, the elves have got their own Islands. They don't need. They don't need Lendor Isle, and Lendor Isle is relatively strong, and would involve the deities from Lendor Isle. So the elves would be in deep shit, actually, if they attack. Uh, yes, there's a couple, but there are allies, alliances between the elder deities and the deities from the soul. So I don't see the, the storyline. Just doesn't work. But that didn't seem to bother any. Well, we're all in agreement with you, so. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. I just wanted to pay homage to, I wanted to say thank you for you sending me those items, Bill. And we're going to use them. Anna, we'll, well, we'll talk about this a little later. Anna's going to be at my house in a couple of weeks. And we're going to use them for a special adventure coming up. So I just wanted to, as a little, you know, a little homage and joke, put Liam in. Well, Liam the, the reason I said it, of course, is because you do all of this stuff with Tori. So I figure you you certainly could figure out some place to use. It. Absolutely, and thank you for thinking of me with that. And Bill was Bill uh, was honored to put put them up, and I will see them in use when she's playing in uh, a week after Thanksgiving, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna have a special night here, um, um, uh, right when Pax the day before Pax Unplugged starts. Um, so uh, Brian, so what do you got any other erotic questions or? Uh, 
Oh, you you muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. My my hey. cat Gandalf the Shy is not being shy tonight. He's shy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, he's oh my. <laughs> you can hear it. Yep. So it, that that crying cat is mine. So I apologize in advance. He's not going to shut up. He That's wants okay. out. Um, so when you, you know, uh, kind of swinging back to the town, uh, you know, uh, when you're designing a town, because you designed a couple now, are, are you designing it specifically to a venture in, or is this something you want to design for publication? So you do, you build out more than you could ever use, you know, uh, you know, what's your philosophy, design philosophy when you're doing Good something question. like this? My philosophy, which had been there all the way from uh, L1, was that almost everybody who was an adventurer was born and raised in the town. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if you don't know who the hell's in the town in detail, how are you going to, to do that? So I would have these various charts that would say, uh, uh, if you're uh, such and such and so and so, Here's the list of uh, 17 or 18 people who could possibly be your parents. And here's okay. the list of people who could be your mentors. And I made those charts up. And I shipped most of them out based on them. Now, one of the adventurers turns out to be the daughter of the uh, Baron of Restonford. And of course, the Baron of Restonford gets assassinated in L2. Mm -hmm. And his wife gets assassinated in L2. And the purpose is to, of course, catch the guy who has a, a deep ulterior motive, and that is to eventually become the Baron of Restonford himself by marrying the daughter, whose name was Andrella, and she was a player character. So uh, it takes a while for everybody to figure out who the guilty party is, and they hire the assassins from the down the road, and they have to go up and clean out an assassin's deal. That's what L2 is all about. Hence the assassin's knot right there. Yeah. Hence. It's a complex adventure. Yes, it is. Uh, because it, in, in its own way, it's sort of a murder mystery. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so... Or a murderer mystery, because you get to figure out who the murderer actually is. <laughs> well, you know, you get, you get credit for things you try to do, and then other times you do something and it falls flat. But that's part of the design process. Mm -hmm. uh, there's little or no way around it. We had a permanent death in that one, Leonard. That may make you happy. Uh, uh, my one uh, player, and everyone knows the ever mysterious Tim, took his thief Gridley. And rule number one, don't go out by yourself unless you're an arrogant SOB. And that's what he did. And they found him, his part, well, I guess, floating away. And, you know, he got assassinated by the guild. And uh, and, and so that was, uh, we did have a permanent death in that when we ran it so yeah. long ago. It had to be like 84, 85 I ran that that long ago. Yeah. The, the old problem awesome. shit happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, but I, I love, I love it. I love that adventure. Uh, I love the complexity of it. Um, so I guess we, let's go to Restonford here. And I got the Restonford map up. I'm going to blow it up on the screen because we have a specific question already. Um, so about... what you want to do is start with 575. Yes, but I only have this map. I only have the no, five... I sent them to you today. Uh, Oh. Yeah, you should look at your email. Oh, I do. I pulled out all the other stuff. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Jay, Jay, Jay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, give, you're guys. behind. Uh, give me a uh, second, guys. Give me a second. A whole oh, my. Lots of uh, stuff. Right, I'm going to go to this map on. Whoops. Let me go through it. Uh, at least uh, I went by it again. There we go. One, two, three, four. Right there. All right. Let me look here. Boy, oh, boy. Oh, there should boy. be two more that look. Very, 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 very much like that. I have the lay kill map. I have lay kill timber cross. I have uh, image four four six seven, which is Ratic. Um, I don't have it, Leonard. I'm sorry. I do, I have my emails. I don't have it. I think uh, so. I have a Zoom name. No, I actually I, I, I don't think I have it either. So. 
I was just going to say, I'm not sure I got it either. Hang on a second. I'm going through all the emails I got. Yeah, from I don't think we did. Here. Hey, about two to three hours. Ago, just uh, to be sure. I got Leia kill maps, but no resting for today. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I got that, Leonard. I'm, I yep, apologize. Yep. We didn't get we, that. We, uh, we missed it. Yep. We, we did not get that. Um, but that's okay. Well, uh, you, yep. while you guys figure out the map situation, I'm going to go deal with my cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, familiar issues right are, are back. difficult. Yep. So uh, this is the one I have, and um, uh, what we can just discuss what's the difference between them, if you'd like to. I, uh, let me give credit. Right, well, let, let me see if I can send it to you. Okay. Fast. Okay, we yeah. can do that because I can pop them up on the screen real quick. Uh, yeah. I, I want to give credit where credit is due. Ronald Colbrick made all these. Yes. Okay. And uh, you know he had he had said, "Hey, that's my map on uh, on uh, Facebook," and I wanted to give him full credit that he has done all these for Leonard, um, which and, and uh, the style is really cool. You know, it's easy to read. It's a very easy to read map. It's got uh, um, you know, it's got the key areas of of, of it on there. And um, so, uh, let me see what else I got here. I think it's it from my phone. And we have Restonford, uh, uh, well, we have Restonford broken down, and this is how detailed we get with uh, what Leonard is doing. Look at this. Okay, so we have this as well. I only have this one, Restonford, one year after a rate of 576. That's the one I have in this. In your one year mind. after 576, yes. Yes. Uh, so this is Restonford 577. Okay. You're looking. Yeah, uh, that's that's... That's the one I have as far as uh, a spreadsheet goes. Uh, and it's just amazing. Everyone is named. I mean, phew, it's crazy. Now, everything's color-coded, too. And maybe we'll go over what each means um, here. But just let me know, Leonard, if you do send them. I got my email up. I um, It's not a big deal. Uh, but we can discuss... Um, uh, you can go over the history of... of whoop, there you go. I just got it. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, now I'm going to be speed adding here. Give me one second, everyone. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. I got to see. So it. while he's doing the map things, I have a question for you. So you do all these names. Where, what's your sources for that? Do you just think of things or do you look at books of baby names? I mean, uh, what what do you do to like fill all that in? Uh, improvise. <laughs> I do not sit there with dice because... I would still be sitting there if I was sitting with that. Okay. So you just what I will do, I have a I have a random generator that will generate six characters simultaneously, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma. And occasionally when I'm doing a bunch of peasants, I'll pick that up and move it over and then I'll look at the individual statistics and say, Can I cope with this? And if I can't, I'll change one or two. So I save myself some time. But um, I, yeah, I certainly dredge up all the names myself. Um, uh, this guy's name, this and that, and the other thing, and then I set up alignments and deities. And uh, I will do a little bit of work on magic items and rolling some dice occasionally. Um, but it, it that, that gets old fast. But now the beauty of the rest of her is Restorford already exists. So all I had to do to go from 575 when L1 and L2 exist, you could theoretically do L1 and L2 wouldn't necessarily occur to early 576. Theoretically, it could go that way. But at any rate, uh, that map shows the town before it got uh, attacked by uh, ogres and. Uh, there we go. That's just five seventy five right here. There's five seventy. Yeah. So Notice now you know, there's no wall around the north side. Okay. There's um, a wall around the south side, but there's no wall around the north side. That will change as we go through. But there's there's the basic map uh, with uh, a few important buildings, and then all the rest of it is described in the text of L1. Now if you bring up 576. 
Ooh. 576 shows a number of places with X's on it. These are the places that got wiped up, burned down, very likely people dead. Uh, but you'll notice it's in that upper corner, the uh, northwest corner is what really got hit the hardest. Um, they made it down into, I don't know if they made it into fishing communities or not, I think they may have. But you can see there's a, it says D for damage and X for destroyed building. So, uh, and then the numbers are uh, guard posts and one or two of the guard posts bought the big one. So now you're dealing with, um, 37 people dead, and I don't ask me why I memorized that number I did. <laughs> uh, but 37 people dead, and very, very few got raised. Uh, okay. Few, but very few. Um, Tie this into when L1 and your campaign and L2 happened. Right. So L L L3 is <clears throat> when... Uh, the town gets attacked and the people run away and now the party who has done L1 and L2 are in pursuit of the remains of the uh, uh, humanoids who uh, attacked the town. They found the town uh, a bit too sturdy for them. Um, and uh, I, I, I certainly wasn't going to destroy Restonford. Uh, but, you know, they penetrated fairly far, and then the defenses came up, and then they realized they were biting off more than they could chew, and they ran off. So L3 begins uh, right there, the Deep Dwarf and Dell, and you send people off to uh, uh. see what they can find out. It's, it's a reconnaissance mission, but it, it goes well beyond that. I did realize that Leonard when I we ran okay so that I got it now so so this happens a year after uh, uh, assassins not happens and things calm down then they get the invasion and then uh, about uh, after that then they do the reconnaissance okay okay all right I got that's pretty cool this is where the uh, attack occurs in okay and cool. then the, the one band goes off in search of um, cool. Now, that ends favorably only by uh, a lot of luck, but they, they do end it up. Uh, okay. And of course, it was that, that uh, module by me that got put into a, uh, a bottom desk drawer for almost 15 and 20 years. Yep. And then uh, they decided they were doing the silver box set and they wanted something original. And they picked my stuff up anyway. So they went ahead and did it, and uh, I had it who I worked with, and we worked at it for oh, a couple, three months, and we agreed on what we were going to do. I sent it back to them, and then they printed something else. It was just uh, frustrating. Yeah. Now, they, of course, owned it because uh, Brian Bloom paid me for it 20-some uh, years ago. So it's their property, it's not my property, but I thought what I would do is update it. Uh, and almost everything that I changed, just it wasn't there because they lost that too. Uh, TSR is renowned for doing strange things. Another TSR great story is I designed a, uh, a tournament that Bob Blake used to run. It was my turn, so I decided I'd do the, I had to make up a, six or seven scenarios for multiple players playing simultaneously and then eventually ending up in a finale. Um, and when I did that, I had given them the material literally 364 days beforehand, literally, <laughs> because it was the end of Gen Con, whatever the hell it was. And I said, well, here's my write-up. This is what I want to do. And what do you think? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Well, then I go all the way to Lake Geneva. I've found out who my DMs are. I've gone over the material with them as best I can. And they said, 
well, by the way, we'd like to change this. And I said, are you crazy? The tournament is tomorrow. Tomorrow. I've gone through all this trouble of, you had the damn material for 364 days. What, uh, what year was that? Oh, there was this part we didn't like. Well, you're not going to change it now. It's all printed. It's in print. Oh, well, we didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the good old days, Leonard. <laughs> it's, it's the perils of having editors. Yeah. Just, an editor will just decide to piss on your work, and there it is. And sometimes you have no recourse. At least since the thing was the next day, I had the recourse of we have to put it tomorrow. Don't look now. Yeah. But I recognize that often when you work on, on projects, but I'm the same way when I work on commercial projects, you send them notes or questions and nothing happens. And then a couple of weeks, like, oh, can you change this? It's like, why didn't you tell me that three months ago? Yeah. And, and that happens so often because they're like, oh, great. And then no one looks at it. And then last minute, like, oh, we need to change this. And yeah, so that I've, I've had that several times. Brian, uh, I don't work for myself. So <laughs> Bob Blake, who was the guy who ran that big tournament, and one year he did the whole thing, and the, the last thing was where you're supposed to take uh, and throw a rock to mud spell to escape from someplace, and the, the, the wonderful wizards of TSR said, "Oh." Rock to mud won't work on uh, worked uh, uh, stone. What? Why, why the hell not? <laughs> That's awesome. There's like, you know, uh, no vindication whatsoever. So he said he threw a hissy fit because this was the last adventure, the one of the, that culminated in 24 people playing, then 12 people in six teams, that, you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. So he was less than pleased with that. So the, uh, well, Guy Gag said they, they, they edit my stuff for that. I produce stuff that they edit. Now, sometimes you could say, I'm your boy. <laughs> yeah. So ultimately, well, when L1 was produced, they sent me a manuscript that wasn't my material. It was maybe. 40% my, no, 60% my material. So I get Gygax on the phone. I said, they changed it. He says, I'll fix it. So it went back to what I wrote. Otherwise, it wouldn't be what I wrote. Somebody had decided to go in and just change this and change that and change this and change the other. The TSR, the TSR editors were a real joy to the phone. <laughs> hey, hey, anyway. Then. We got a couple of questions about Restonford. Would that be okay? I want to. I'm going to go back to the big screen on this, uh, just so we can uh, get a reference here. One second. I got to uh, hit the right button. Um, so, right here, we'll go to the, this. We'll go to the, the main map here. Let me take Deep Dwarf and Delve down. All right. So, um, uh, two questions. One is uh, by an, uh, an Admiral Badass, and I see the Albie of Falcon. He asked specifically. Um, he's doing, uh, he, he says he's making up an entire, he's building a terrain piece set in Restonford. Um, how, uh, how do you envision the building to appear or look like, oh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, architecture, you know, brick, wood. Good, good question. Okay. Uh, I think we'd have to go back and find, uh, the map of. Well, no, I would have to go back to L1 because in L1 and L2, building number three doesn't get destroyed, which is the Abbey of Falcon. Right. So that's going to really good to have a write-up. Now, whether it goes into it's made of stone, has how many windows, and all, I don't know if it's got that. Okay. But that should be there. So... Uh, I, Leonard, I kind of have a secondary question to that. If you 
kind of step back and think when you conceived of this town were you basing it off of a specific kind of medieval style uh like in a different place like northern europe or in the mediterranean was that influencing the architecture and the style of the town or was it just something you were saying i need an inn i need a a, a smithy and you were just putting elements in and building a town well I, i'd say it's more uh <laughs> Germanic and, and uh, Danish. You know, those so, so, so it'd be more uh, daub and wattle, you know, the wood with the kind of uh, the stuff between it. So it's like. Wattle is for peasant. Yeah, true. I didn't think I did any uh, spit and wattle. No, I don't think so. Okay. So you were basing it like a more Germanic type of town? Well, it was the town out of which the player characters were going to come into being. Yeah. So they rolled up their character, and, and I'm one of those people who roll for number of experience points already earned. And my usual formula would be three die ten times die percent. So you're going to get some people with. A thousand to thirteen or fourteen hundred, but you're going to get a crap load of people with fifty experience points or two hundred experience points or two hundred fifty. But now and then, you'll get somebody who registers on the two thousand seven hundred level. So what it does is produce almost everybody's first level, some are second, and there is that off chance that someone could get really lucky and hit third. Like a, a straight thief or a straight cleric. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, dude. Uh, it, it seems to me that when we did rest it for now, I, I, the, the formula I just quoted you, uh, might not have been the formula I used then because I'm positive that the druid who was third level, uh, we ended up making third level. I'll come back to this. I don't think 3,000 points is enough for... Uh, oh, third level of priest is 3001 exactly, and uh, thief is 2501 for third. So Druid's, so. Druid's 4001 for third. They get they get real quick between like level six and nine, but they, they almost mimic fighter experience going up early. Um, Druids, uh, we're talking about edition one, right? Yep, yep, yeah, because edition two just outright pisses on the Druid as far as that concerned. So that's another reason I went back to uh, edition one. But anyway, uh, so let's go to uh, uh, Reston for 577. Okay, sounds good. Let's look very quickly and then bring up the spreadsheet that supports it. Sure, we can do that. All right, so here's Reston for 577. Can you tell us what the elevation levels are? That was the other question. Uh, is it 15? Well, it's it's very little elevation because you're that's the ocean sitting right there. Right. And the rest of the river dunning, uh, uh, running into it. So I would think the elevation of most of that stuff is 15 to 20 feet. But now you, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, uh, ter um, what do I want to say? Um, uh, around the, the castle, for example, there's two circles around it, representing the fact that it's on a hill. The same is true of the stuff in the northeast corner. Okay. And also the place where the, uh, the uh, abbey is. Right. Uh, the abbey's on the highest. Yeah. Somewhere I define what those contour lines, if they're 20 or 50 feet, I imagine it's one or the other. And I may well have done that in L1. Okay. I believe, yeah, I be there's a lot of contour lines I recall in L1, and I believe it is, you're absolutely right that it is in there. So um, I I'm going to think it's 15. That's just from memory. Um, so it's not it, it too high. Be. Yeah. I, yeah. They're, I, they're not gigantic uh, hills by any stretch, but they're uh, enough to get a broad view of the air. All right, so let me switch. Boom, boom. All right, so now 
I did a bunch of check sums on this thing. And you see where it says classes? Yes. So as I wrote the character, I would <clears throat> put a number one in the count area and then create a counterpoint in the various character classes. And at the very bottom of the spreadsheet, it comes out 313 equals 313. I'm relatively sure that's right. Yeah, I can scan through real quick and go back. There you go. Uh, 313, 313. Uh, yep. So, and it also gives the number of the various classes. Right. And it gives the proportion of males, females, etc. Now, if you zip up back to the top, There. All right, so now there's a lot of color coding here. So you see bright yellow is major damage near total destruction. So buildings two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're right on that one. That involves them. 25% uh, uh, of damage will the garrison that falls into that category. Uh, I like how you say Pello died in this in raid. This is his apprentice in rebuild two, Fletcher Jevar, which is yeah. cool. Which is cool that level of detail. Um, you know, it's just it's super neat that you know you got you got all the notations as to like uh, Relkin, Ashfor, Marcus, and Amos were killed in the raid. Uh, yes. You know, it's nice. It's just phew, you want details so where you want. When you look at the green highlighting in the mm -hmm. name of the character. Mm -hmm column, it's going to show you that uh, all the guys that are in green, which are Carlton and something and something and Mark and Weber and Br Brillman, Paul, Britman Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, When you blow it up, it, it, it gets a little fuzzy. Anyway all of those guys now have stats that didn't have them before, or they got a, was it a promotion? Okay. Or I corrected the stats from L. Two or L one. It looks like Gel Pass was knighted, according to uh, you know. Lucky man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you notice the Gel Pass, there's a, a dark orange highlight on his count. Yes. It means he's a member of the city council. Oh, okay. So there's seven of those guys. Okay. I can and skip through another page here. When you look at at uh, oops, when you look at Gel Pass. He's captain of the guard, and by all uh, rights and measures, should be one of the key people. Um, but, and Andrella left it up to him, to the whole court, and run the town. But she said, always go to Peltar if it's one of these things where somebody is trying to screw you. <laughs> uh, believe me, you can tell when somebody is pulling something on you. When they are, just say, well, I'm, I'm going to have to take that under consideration. And if they say, um, well, that I, but I need to know today, then the answer is no. Well, I mean, if you go to the second page, it's so cool. Uh, I remember Falco the Dwarf in, in, the, in, the, in the inn. I remember that. And now you got him as a member of the council, you know. So you've built the... You've built the adventure, uh, and this is how, like, this is your version of creating a living, breathing campaign. That's exactly what it is. You've turned, you turned two modules that were, probably, you know, well, that, well, you had the idea of the campaign, and you, you making it exist, and that's what, you know, is, is so great about D and D. You know, you turned it into something alive. So, uh, so when I did this, I created artisan level. Now I don't know if I did it. Prior to this, I think it did. But artisan level is listed there. Oops, let me go back. Let me go back to the top and see if we can. Okay. Yeah. So artisan level is right next to alignment. Got um, it. Yep. And, and alignment is colored orange if you know how to read and write. Um, <laughs> and then uh, to briefly explain artisan level. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to be a cook. Uh, first level, you're a novice. You're, you're learning a little bit about salting things and peppering things and cooking them at the right temperature. Oh, and then you go up to being an apprentice, which is number two. And then at number three, you finally get to say, I am a cook, which means I won't poison you 95% uh, of the time. Uh, it'll be palatable. 
it may not be the best thing you've ever tasted, but it won't be the worst thing you've ever tasted. And then I run the vast majority of people up to uh, level eight, which would be a chef or a master chef. And you have to kind of dredge up the names for the various things. But it tells you who's got a level over and above their player character level okay. or their class level, I should say. Like your shipwright is level six of eight, which seems to be pretty high on this on this. Yeah, table. yeah, he, he knows what he's doing. Okay. Six out of eight, he knows what he's doing. All right, that's and you got one farmer that's six of eight, Breeze, who looks like he's a dru uh D two, a druid as well. So no wonder. So um uh, that's cool. Oh. I so anyway, there's there's lots lots of color coding, uh, and I found that as long as you've got a color printer, you're good. If you don't yeah. have a color printer, you're going to get this all this gray stuff, and you go, "What?" Yeah. But you really have to print it on a color printer. But it's all in there for a reason. Every Here's little. Every little, um, every little minor detail is there, uh, um, Leonard. So uh, you combine this with L1 and L2, uh, which this just adds even more detail to it, you know? So, and so he, all, of the, all of the people who are, like, you, you look at the garrison, you have fuck, is it, far, far, far hubs, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. The very first guy that's uh, blue. Mm -hmm. And blue means that you have arrived in the last 10 months. So you arrived after the destruction of health okay. of, of, of 576 because there is probably a general call uh, or you've heard that Restonford was attacked and destroyed and maybe this is a place for you to uh, make a little money. Uh, because a lot of the stuff from L1 Many of the characters, all the way up to second level, didn't have strength, intelligence, charisma, and like thirty constitution charisma, but I added it so that now you have the, the full blown guy or girl. And you know, the children, I didn't do anything with the children unless they were at least thirteen. I, think. I see you have a lot of uh, children are in blue, the uh, blue box, I believe. Children are the last uh, male, male and kids. Okay. So kids shows where there's a, a, a child of 12 or less. And take the carpenter, number, what is it, four. Carpenter has two kids, son seven and daughter four. Okay. No okay. stat. Okay. But down the road, maybe they will when they get older. So uh, that's another that's neat thing about it. So, Anna, Brian, do you have any questions for uh, Leonard based on this oh, I'm, I'm, detail? I'm, I'm don't, I'm, see if I can find the – I have the Excel spreadsheet somewhere, but I can see it fairly well. But I'm just amazed that, that you detailed every villager this well. That That's kind of – now you set the standard. Now when I do my next adventure, I realize I need to to stat out every every person in town. It's, it is impressive. When I took a, a psychology course, uh -huh. uh, I learned what I am. I'm anal. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go on and on and on, put it in detail if I can put it in. Um, I'm that way with the landscape. It overdoes also. it, but yeah. uh, but this is what this is you. This is trademark Leonard Lakofka. So yeah. mm -hmm. how about you, Brian? What do you what do you? What do you well, I, I you know, it's amazing all the detail. I mean, I kind of come from the opposite end. I tend to uh, like sketch out a personality and stats, unless they're someone special. I don't really even bother. I just assume straight tens, unless there's a reason they have something lower you know, for commoners. And so I don't, you know, I kind of, it gives me fl flexibility and on the fly, because I usually don't pre-generate everything. I just figure out what the main highlights are. And then when character, when people ask me questions, I kind of backfill. So this is like a, this is a, a very different style from my own. Yep. Uh, and, and it's, and I'm not saying mine's better or worse. I'm just saying it's just different. And so it's like, it's, I'm kind of like looking through we're also dealing with a different edition than the one that I play. So, yep. you know, I have to, you know, you know, 
there's different considerations. So it's kind of an apples or oranges in terms of my stylistic choice. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot here. And the great thing about this is, is that this is kind of harkens back to the Guy Gaxian model that yep. was uh, uh, Village of Hamlet. Uh, you know, but he didn't, I will say he didn't even go as far to name everybody a Village of Hamlet like you have. <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> but, uh, he almost yeah. did. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't go to that quite to that level. But there's a lot of stuff you can do, you know, like, there's a lot of emergent play that can come from that because you start asking questions about, well, who is this person? And, you know, and that can kind of change things a little bit. But, you know, at least you have like a baseline where you can say, well, they can do this. And you have this in town, which a lot of people don't have. You know, like, you know, someone asks you, well, who's the best cook? And if you haven't thought about that, now you're just making something up on the fly. Whereas mm -hmm. this, you can literally go find who's the best cook in Restonford. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's an interesting style. You know, you definitely have to keep it in a spreadsheet or OneNote to find it all. <laughs> you know, because it's just very data intensive. It is. But yeah, it's it, it's a fun thing to play around in. Yeah. And you definitely used, get lots of it. Yeah, I, I use kind of a halfway approach because I have a lot of typical ones like city guards, park keeps, the right, general right. villager stuff. I, I've generated and, and also used a lot of pre-made NPCs for when I ran 3.5 and, and Pathfinder, that was a whole book. So I kind of made, so I have like a couple of generic city guard patrols and, 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 and a couple of inns statted out. So I can, I have like 10 different barmaids and when it's needed, I just pick one of them. And then I put those stats in, in my notes. So when they come back, they have it and and i usually have a lot of names rolled up i have one of these uh, everlasting book of names it's awesome yeah. it has for, for different areas of gray hawk so i generate like a hundred names for that realm and i have them ready so when i need to name something i just dive into that little file and 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 cut cross, cross one there. off and exactly cross one off and, and put it in the notes so so yeah. therefore i can kind of build it all. and and important npcs i name them and, and stat them out but most don't even get unique stats maybe one of i switch out a weapon or, or or put a note on them but a lot of the 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 city guards have the same or village guards or whatever they have the same serial number under them so to speak they're only like 30 or so in the whole world so far but that's enough to create the variation if you have that many bases and then you you can work from there so to speak so, so what, uh, i have a quick question for leonard is so when you're designing something like this is the are you doing the same level of detail for your home campaign or it, and then there's like a different level of detail you do something you design for someone else to run like at the con that you've been talking you know, the con well there's a fair amount of uh, detail in Laekeel is um, mm -hmm. uh, a minor amount of detail in Laekeel. <laughs> 75 yeah, yeah, pages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, okay, but was that intended for your own personal use or was that something you wanted to, to give to for the convention? The yeah, for the uh, convention. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you well, don't, guys, you don't even, if you haven't looked at this, Gumbert's Tavern and Darts. I mean, I'm like, I, I just, it's uh, Django's Fish Fry. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, yep. uh, guard post for the night watch. Uh, Haberdasher, Lord Mayor's Hall. It's uh, this. Uh, so uh, we have a question online. Gitano, Lord Grendelwolf asks, um, in resting for resting for the largest one you've detailed in uh, on Lender Isle. I'm assuming, and Le Lay Kill's larger. I know that. Have you done? Is that the Lay Kill the largest one you've detailed, Leonard? Well. Certainly, Croton is much, much, much larger. Okay, so in uh, L4? L5. L5, okay. L5, Croton's bigger. Croton is much larger, but okay. I don't think it has the, that level of detail. Okay. Um, you go in there to, uh, there are various things you want to accomplish when you get to uh, L5. There's a couple of people you need to kill. Uh, and that will be due to, now, the party that comes in um, to do L4 and L5 shows up just after the party that goes to the Deep Dorm and Dwell. So that's party number one, historic. Now, a new group of people show up for L4 and 5. And there's a ship travel log that's listed in L4 <laughs> that describes 
all of the towns and all of the uh, ports that they stopped in along the way, and how many days had gone by, and is there anything that was an adventure? And the kid, yada, the, yada, yada, the yada. came from Gradsel, correct, in Keeland. Is that correct? Could be. Yeah, I think so, uh, uh, which is pretty neat. That sounds vaguely right. I haven't read L4 in a while. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, uh, like, uh, a settlement somewhere in Lender, are we talking about uh, Thorpe size, uh, uh, you know, 50 to 100 people, and the little settlements all dotted all over? a little bigger than that. Okay. Usually a little bigger than that. Well, someday, it may happen, may not, there might be an L6, Ooh. which would include Falconville, and it would include um, various things up along the uh, coast. May I make a suggestion for you? May I make a suggestion? You love Kickstarter so much. Why don't you? you I guarantee, you if you Kickstarted L six, you'd get a huge p amount of people who would who would want to see that. I mean, all three of us would want to see it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I bet you sure. everyone online would want to see it too. Uh, so, um, I mean, that may be the way to go. Uh, you, uh, you know, as a suggestion, I you know. Can ask Carlos to publish it. Yeah, we could, yeah. We could get, uh, we get, uh, yeah, see, there you go. So, uh, Grendelwolf, Grendelwolf Guitar just said, so say we all. So, that may be a consideration yeah. down the road if you want to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, I guarantee you that uh, you get overwhelming, you get huge support on that. But yep. I would love to see it. I would love, I loved, I mean, we all love the L series of adventures. Absolutely. Um, this is, I'm glad you spent uh, the time to dig into this detail. Uh, do you see, um, are you going to continue more Rattic, uh, 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 expanding that area you've built? Uh, with, I know Anna's helping you out with the map. You're going to continue to work on that area too? Um, well, I might if I decide to uh, take the fact that they rescued the, the, the woman and the daughter, but didn't uh, kill off the guy they were supposed to kill off. Okay. So then we'd start over again. Okay. It's a, um, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, I know uh, David that was on, he had to leave because he gets up at 4.30, but David Leonard's a gentleman who, uh, you know, we were talking about, he, he's got something going on, Southern Rotic, so he wanted to say hello. He was on for a little bit, but he had to, he had to get off, uh, and that he was he was happy to see that uh, what he's he doing is... That thought, the knock on the door just told me that dinner time. Okay, all right. Well, look at that. So, uh, Leonard, look at that timing. Hey, yeah. uh, you know, so uh, we'll we'll take it from here and discuss some other things as well. So, uh, thank you so very much for coming on tonight. I hope you had fun with this. I did. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, thank nice. you so much, Leonard. Leonard, we'll talk yep. to you soon, and then whenever you want to come on again, you just let me know, and we'll be more than happy to talk about any topics you want. Okay. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Read the All right, have a good one, okay. man. Thanks. All right, bye bye. Bye. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna take it over ourselves here. That was cool. That yes, was awesome. That, that was yep. really. Uh, uh, why don't we talk about what we do when we uh, how we build up a city? I mean, that's a good thing to keep this going. Would you? Wouldn't you say? Like our each our, our individual styles um, yeah. of, of building up. Uh, so uh, Brian, let's start with you. What what um, what do you got going I, on? I, try to do it Leonard's way, but I got so lost in the weeds on that because it, it, I just never got it off the, uh, off the table, so to speak, to the table. I should have never got it to the table to play with. And so I've kind of gone in a different direction where I do a much looser piece where I, 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 I figure out the highlights. And then when players ask me questions about what they're interested in finding in the town, I make a, a snap decision whether that exists or not. And like Anna, I have a list of names and I just go from there, right? And uh, and whatever best serves the story at that moment, and my conception of the general part of that location, locale, and it's just more of like, okay, does that make sense that 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 thing would be there? And if it doesn't make sense, why is it there? You know, it, it, and it really also depends on player need, to tell you the truth. You know, to, to me, to have that ultra level detail is just I'd, I'd be forever making everything and not playing and so that i think is the you know and also i'm not trying to do this for publication so me having just rough notes is much more i'm just going to the table every other week to play but that's yeah. yeah for your style that makes total sense though i mean yeah like, yeah yeah you no. know and, and i'm not saying it's superior or anything like that i'm just right. saying it's just a different style it's a little looser 
you know, also, you know, in addition that I play, you have basic stat blocks for a lot of things that you can just pull, you know, um, unless you need something special, right? right. And that, you know, and this kind of moves away from what first edition did, which is, you know, the, the, you built everything like a player character, but you didn't really have anything than the, the player character classes. And so there, you know, third edition flirted with this whole idea of the expert and the, I think it was the shaman and the noble and the warrior were these four uh, NPC classes that were, they had their own level progression and they had their own abilities and they were less than a, a full on character class, but it allows you to build specific NPCs that weren't, you know, they had a reason why they weren't adventuring because they just didn't have the capability, right? right? And, and uh, fifth edition's gone in a slightly different route um, uh, where it, uh, NPCs are more like monster stat blocks where they ju they're just a mechanical thing that you lay over a role playing shell and you can take the basic stat block of one thing and re what we call reskinning it as something else. And maybe you like change a spell or you change, you know, what their, their skill sets are or what, you know, whatever you need to do to make that difference in it. And it usually can be done pretty well on the fly. So it's just, it's a, it really depends on what edition you're playing and what kind of uh, tradition you come out of. You know, I can see that, you know, the tradition that Leonard's coming out of from the, the, the old days, you know, that I remember from first edition way back, you know, at the beginning of the game. And, you know, think, you know, there's just different ways to do it. So that's kind of where I come at it. I don't think I've actually built a city ever. I've, I've detailed towns and little villages, but I've never really tried to make a metropolitan space. Because uh -huh. I've I've never really run that kind of adventure. So I was trying to see if Tim, uh, the ever mysterious Tim, was around because of his building up of how he does a city state would be an interesting discussion yeah. if I could hop him on. But um, I'm right, sure, right, you know, because well. uh, um, that's that's his that's his cup of tea too. Uh, yeah. So uh, how about you, Anna? Well, um, I've I've been I had a little bit of the same dilemma before because I did all the, the, the cities and stuff that I used in my own games. And now I realize I want to publish that for my patrons and, and on my website and stuff. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. going back and, and, and detailing them a little bit more. But for me, I'm very map oriented. Every, I, want to, I want to see in my head and, and sketch out what it looks like before anything. So, so I start out with the physical characteristics of the city, meaning what kind of climate, what, what the land looks like. Is it a city up in the the permafrost in the north or is it up in the desert is it up in the mountains is it by coast along a river and so on and so forth so the first thing is to look at the first ge geography of the place and the climate of the place that sets that's the first bit to to start building with and the second one is demographics meaning who lives here is it dwarves uh, human merchant merchants are there uh, uh, warlords out in the desert somewhere or 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 are there raiders up in the mountains whatever so meaning who lives here and the third really big part is the economy political meaning who runs the city is it the poor city is it outcast is it the thriving metropolis metropolis that has trade routes everywhere or is it an insular city and, and, and so on and so forth. Is it the learned city or is it just a bunch of rednecks that happens to, to be ganged up because they're attacked by a dragon or, or whatever, meaning all these kind of things I, I try to, and, and I use the, the ultimate campaign from Pathfinder. So I write down stat blocks for the city. So the city mm -hmm. gets like a ba basic character sheet in itself, even before I even stat out a single NPC or anyone in the city, I just, the city in itself. And then I sketch out the what this looks like. Does it have high walls? Is it a sprawling open metropolis without any, meaning if they've never been attacked and they're out in the plains, then why build the defenses? And if they build defenses, what are they made of? Are, are they, do they have building materials in the area or not? So, so these so, are a lot of the considerations that I do. So you're doing kind of more of a build out of what the environment is, mm -hmm. you know, the yep. history of it. Yep. And then that kind of 
then yeah. I fill it with the, with NPCs and stuff once that done, so to speak. And often since right. I'm adventuring Greyhawk, that means that I have to read through the, the what's written about the city, which is a lot a lot about the 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 story about it. There might be some adventures set there, but very little physical and often not much political. More than a few cities, like the perfect example is Rel Devon that has had a whole campaign around Real Devon. And what's written about the, the city is mentioned hundreds and hundreds of times, but what's actually written about the city can probably fit in two pages in a book. That's it, mm. if that much, maybe one page, that, that's all that's actually written. There's no sketches. I didn't find a sketch of it at all. So, so I sketched it out. I took the, the hints here and there, and I basically wrote down what could be 10 pages of notes. And I have detailed city maps, and I have probably about 50 locations in the city that I have an idea of. But my locations are, they are usually just a paragraph, two sentences, a paragraph, and a couple of names, like in so-and-so, little shop so-and-so, here's someone who sells this, there is an inn of, of plumbers or, or whatever it is. All the, these kind of little things that I come up with that, that has something to do with the story of the city itself. And then you backfill it when the players actually exactly when the players get close to it. That's that's when I fill it in because I want to. I run sandbox, so I basically sketch out at least in in some detail everything within two hundred miles of where the players are. Everything. Wow. I have an idea of of everything. Every town, every village, every dwarf, whatever. There's a sheep herder who lives across the forest there. That is like twenty miles across this forest. Just in case they go through, I, I kind of think it through, put a few notes like bullet points or, 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 or usually sketch on, on the map. I just put a few things down there and, and set it out. And then when they get closer, I fill in more and more details. And right. usually often they've been there before. So then I go back to the notes and Good update sideways. them. It might have been 10 years, 15 years, 20 years in game time since they were there last time. And then I kind of fill it in what's happened and, and so on. And I read the, the research material, just like when I do my maps, I go back and, and read this the stories. And, and, and I think this yeah. kind of comes into another piece, which is when you're building something out, are you using something that exists, especially when you're doing something in Greyhawk? Oh yeah. Because yeah, you know, like if I do something for Harvey, there's a lot of different, it's also like what era are you playing in? Like my campaign is starting in the uh, winter of, uh, 575. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah. I'm you and I use Seton from uh the the Ghost of Saltmarsh book mm -hmm. as the starting point and you know there's like a rough outline of what Seton is. There's not a lot of detail other than who the power structure is and what it was and what it's become. Yeah. And I filled in a little bit of detail because we weren't going to stick around there and I immediately took them north near the Dreadwood and I used Oakhurst from Sunless Citadel but I kind of expanded that because now it's a timber town and not this farm village town that supports the farms around it. It's a, it's a lumber camp, essentially. It's this yeah. boom town lumber camp on the edge of the Dreadwood that's supplying the, the Hewish Navy down south. And so the, I have thought about the economics of this and what yeah. would be there and all that. And then now they're in the dungeon. And, and so I haven't really come back and really fleshed that out because the, there's been no need. You know, and so, but I have like these outlines and I fill it in as we go. Yeah. And, and and that's kind of the, the style. But like, if I had to like do a campaign from scratch in Greyhawk, like there was like nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would that's be a That's what I do all different. the time. I've never, yeah. I always write everything from, from the get go. So. I mean, that was, that was the great thing about the Greyhawk box set, the original box mm -hmm. set. It was gold for us. Yep. Well, so, yeah, yeah. I, I've used that too. And, and I, I, I paired that together with the Gary's version of that from the Gord books. So I kind of took the material from the box set and put it in, in the Gary's kind of but even. Yeah. Even the Gord books only took you to certain places. So exactly. Yeah. The, the, and in between, I've added a whole bunch of it. I, I, I skipped right. a few other places you had, but almost everything in there is 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 put on the sketch of, of the city that I have. So right. that I hope eventually will be turned into more of a, a concrete mapping project. That's one of my dream projects that I want to yeah. do in some years. Right. So, yeah. And, and, and I, you know, so for, for you, Jay, when yes. you're doing this, because you have this co long contiguous history mm -hmm. of, of the game, you've been able to, you know, I'm sure you have pages upon pages of stuff that is the story and the locations and the people. Yeah. 
-hmm. because you've just built it's just been layer upon layer upon layer upon layer i want to show you i want to that's what i i want to show you this uh it's a great point and because thursday night we go back to our favorite place in the world the michael baton world of harvey right so um (laughs) awesome so uh, uh why is it turned i don't know why it's turned but I'm sorry, guys. It's just one of those goofy things when you take a picture off your phone, not your iPad, and you put it under your PC, it turns it, and then I try to unturn it. All right, so this is – I got some new pieces of uh, Harbor Town that's going to be added on. We're going to be on the dock in the wharf area again. All right? So uh, <laughs> I will show – yeah, it's like, ah! <laughs> so I have here – okay. I have here – this is Harbor in my world. All right? I have our, our main campaign uh, group – notebook with all the adventures in it i have the original other two groups this one's falling apart with all notes on certain pages usually it's to the ships and to the the information going on i have this map from the slavers with all my notes on it i have this map from the living uh that was put in the dungeon or dragon magazine Mm -hmm. from living greyhawk right with Mm -hmm. my notes on this then i have this from earth journal all color coded with all my changes and edits on this map Okay, mm-hmm. of hard be all cross referenced, right? So, right. <laughs> all yeah. uh, plus, then I have all this note information. I have all the stuff that uh, I have color coded locations off the Earth Journal where each location is, and mm-hmm. see that. All yep. right, so this is mm-hmm. my world, Brian, of my insanity on just what I do in Harvey. I, I yeah. was gonna, I, I was gonna try to find a different way to say it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, I do this for. Greyhawk too, yeah. and yeah, this is my binder right here. I got everything. Uh, yes, Baton must die. Uh, Brian, uh, Bill said. Well, we'll see if my, you see Michael Baton again on Thursday. But yeah, <laughs> Jay, I have please. this. Yeah, everything. Look, here's my slavers. Watch this. The covers falling off. You know, mm-hmm. you got this, and it's like uh, this is my bed. I have a I have a perfect condition one too. But so see. You, you see this thing from Will here in the chat. So Jay, <laughs> please tell me you keep that in the binder. Yes, the, yes, it's all. <laughs> So that is that is my setup for Harby. Yeah. Greyhawk's very similar. Altamir is not as bad because we don't have a map. We have yeah. that sketch. Idea. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, yeah, I do very much the same thing, but I yeah. stopped using paper like twenty years ago and, and went digital. So 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 now I've i take all the digital notes and, and and I sit and 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 during games I, I scribble on the uh, the tactiles using a, a, a dry erase and then I take a picture with my phone and, and put it into Evernote and, and have these notes while and then afterwards I and I take a picture of all the things that I draw and I can save these locations so so I simply write on the map what that is and what the room is and, and notes what happens and stuff and just oh, add it, it and, camera I'll have to say camera phones have been it's the a biggest, godsend it's just a godsend because yeah. I can take a picture of yeah. something I've sketched out mm-hmm. And I can slap it in. I, I, instead yeah. of Evernote, I use OneNote from Microsoft. Yeah, it's which the is same a, thing. It's so, the yeah. same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. slightly different feature sets, but you know, does essentially yep. the same. Thing. I used my and, DSLR before, even on a tripod, so I could just have oh a, God, had one yeah. of these uh, the remotes that I had sitting. So I just took a picture of the 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 set. I, I put it up high up and, and just took a picture when when there was something new, and then just. Ha- having seen that monster camera you own, <laughs> oh yeah I mean, yeah I mean, but that, i didn't that, use that lens <laughs> okay okay no 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 not, not the wildlife wide lens yeah. okay mm-hmm. yeah oh not the look, wildlife God, lens well, look at it this yeah, yeah. way too i'm not completely insane when it, when they fall out when the pages start falling out of the notebook i i i put these in a pdf so they're on my computer oh, okay good yeah so yeah but, i will say this is the the nice thing about so like if you guys are organizing a campaign from now and you have and you're not like jay who has nearly 40 years worth of stuff nope. piled up on shelves yeah. <laughs> and, and you would need to hire an archivist to actually get it into electronic format. <laughs> so, yes. um, yep. If you're starting from go, I mean, really take a look at some of the electronic options that are out mm-hmm. there. Oh yes. The, the Evernote, one and note. Oh, there campaign and, versions like World Anvil. There's and, uh, Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot a of different of ways. Coming to, out now. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to skin that mm-hmm. cat. Yep. I can say is something that you can keep electronic that is uh, the thing I like about OneNote, for example, is I can hyperlink pages to one another. Mm-hmm. So like yep. if I need to know, like, so my Greyhawk listing for, yep. you know, Keoland has 
all you know this the you know the Sheldamar River in it, and I can click on a link and look at the Sheldamar River information. Yep. And if I want to add something, because I have basically all the text from the box set in that, if I want to add something to it, I can just do that right there. And that's another thing. Let's kind of talk about that. Box and it's set. searchable afterwards. You can, oh, you yeah, can always and, search for something. When the players can, mention can, someone, you can search it and find out who that is. And I can put tags to search yes, by tags. Yes, exactly. For you can put tags on them. And, yep. Mm -hmm. But one of the things, so like the World of Greyhawk box set is an amazing document because it's written from a particular point of view. It's done like an actual, you know, uh, encyclopedia would have been done, you know, where yeah. it's not really it's not written like a, a an adventure supplement would be written today right where you have like here's the adventure key and you know here's all the towns e through blah 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 and it, it, you know so one of the things that it's interesting is some of the information that is very important for an area might be in a different book it certainly was mm -hmm. usually a different <clears throat> sections of a book That's, and when you start yeah. to put that information all into a hyperlink consolidated place mm -hmm. Yep. patterns start to emerge that you don't see when you're just reading through it yep. and you know it changes how it, you think like uh, for example knowing which city is navigable up from a river you know uh and which cities are not in a town that's spread over helen gone but if you want to find that you have to know where I'm to look. doing a map just to, because i wanted that was one of the informations i wanted to uh, have yeah. on it so so it will it will come very very soon there will be a, a look at it very right. soon yeah mm -hmm. right and, and you know and depending how something's keyed can be like very very <laughs> important and so how you organize your information you know it, you should be doing it to you know what your personality requires so that yep. you can get at it yep. you know um, don't use my or Anna's or Jay's or Leonard's thing specifically just because we do it. Yeah. Figure out what works for you. Yeah, and it depends on what game style you have. Yes. Meaning, true. Yeah. yeah very meaning, true. Meaning, Jay and me, we are very similar in, in how we detail things, but we run it a bit because I haven't run one continuous story for, for I, I usually run a continuous story for some years and then I save it. And then I start with a new gaming group and we start gaming in a new part of, but I keep the story over it, but the players never really see that. So I usually want to, so, so I keep the ideas and what happened briefly and, and all the stories, so to speak, so, so I can kind of continue. So for it, the, the stories continues for me, but not for the players necessarily. Yeah, well, and right. I'm in 598 now, soon 599. That's where I ended my rel devin campaign like three years ago. And, and I so when you that. so when you start a new campaign, on are you going to go from that date forward, or are you going to yes. tell mm -hmm. a story at a different? From Don't, that it will it will go also. that that date okay. forward, so to speak. So yeah, mm -hmm. we try to uh, you know. I've looked back and now we're at almost one year real life is one year of game time almost. It's really close. Uh -huh. Wow. So uh, yeah, it's just it, it, the way it works out. Yeah, and uh, we're at six ahead. We're six twenty two. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but that's just that's just a, you know when you've been playing for so long the stories go on and uh, yep. I and with nineteen nineteen different adventuring groups the order of Yulik with all their individuals all the other. You know, and the people around that aren't, you know, the, the the bounty hunters guild and all the other sorts of fun stuff we do. It's we bounce around a lot because of my guys, that's what they like. They like a different group, a different story every couple of weeks, and that's what we do. And that's that's the way our it's evolved for us. And and but they all interact. The, the groups interact with each other. Like, for example, I, I hate to bring it up again, but Michael has deals with three different adventuring merc groups in Hardby. You know, he deals with the Harby regulars. He deals with reckless indifference. And this Thursday, he'll be dealing with the Hiltless Swords. So, which the ones that sent, you know, did the adventure that started all the trouble. So, um, you know, that's just the way we do it. You know, and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of interaction between groups. Sometimes I'll backtrack time-wise if I do a different group and say, well, yeah, this is happening a month. You know, with the other group we did, that happened then. This is a month before, but you're on the other side. You know what I mean? We're in the Vespi Forest now, so it doesn't really affect it. So that's the kind of way I handle that, too. So, uh, but, um, yeah, Thunder Th Thunder uh, said uh, he watched the relationship event, uh, Gab, and we had a couple weeks ago. Thank you uh, for that compliment. I really appreciate it. We try to 
make sure that the you know all the characters are interacting because uh, I think that adds a little another level of realness to the campaign when your characters are uh, across and they and characters can hate other characters. I mean, there's no there's nothing that says you can't have enmity right between player characters with in different groups. We have that all the time. Characters don't like each other, you know, and that's that's okay. Cool. Have NPCs that hate each other. And they're both lawful. <laughs> they have two lawful good NPCs that are from the same family, and they hate each other. They dislike each other. Andre Winchester and Elaine Winchester, they hate each other. They're like second cousins, and they can't stand each other. It's the way it is. There it is. But you can be lawful good. Uh, that doesn't affect your yeah. uh, you know, alignment, you know. I, so, uh, but uh, I, I appreciate all the um, um, input here. Tim was saying in his city state campaign, what he's done was he took the city and he expanded. And if you anyone's watched his games, he's expanded to these states around it. And he, that's how he grew his thing. He took that huge map, but he expanded outward, not inward. He didn't make changes in the city as much as he made changes outside of the lands around the city. Yeah. To kind of make it more of a sprawling metroplex, you know, like Los Angeles would be or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that was cool. I appreciate that input out there, Tim. So, uh, um, yeah, and that's that's the way Thunder says, you know, the next generation of characters. Well, um, you don't have to go right to the next generation of characters. What you can do is that group of characters. I'm not sure if you do a, if you do a one to twenty. A lot of um, I know I know a lot of the adventure packs that Wizards brings out, especially for Forgotten Realms, starts at one. You go to twenty, it's over, right? Well, that, actually, they've started to change that up a little bit, which is they've good. Been, That's good. They've done one to fifteen and one to ten. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I, I want to say that the latest one is one to ten, but I might be slightly off. It might be one slightly above ten. Like Storm King's Thunder, that was one to twenty, wasn't it? Uh, I haven't played that one, so I can't speak okay. to that. I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of uh, the uh, Descent into Avernus one, the brand new one. Is yeah, th I think they haven't really done like a full twenty in quite a while. Okay, so it marches one to ten. Okay, yeah. So Thunder. Another thing we do all the time is I do party splits, and in 2020 on our 40th year anniversary, you're going to see a lot of it with the Legion, which is a super high level for us. 11th and 12th levels high level. You're going to see a lot of that mm -hmm. split party things where I make them take one player character, do this, and the other ones go off in our direction, and then you know we do a lot of that in our campaign adventures for not the order of you like it's just it makes it eat higher level characters i i need i can't have 12 of them running around an adventure it's really tough so um you know that's yeah. what we do the, the sweet zones right up to about seventh level and after yeah. that things start to get wonky yeah um, and that was true all the way up to third edition uh fifth edition has a slight uh slightly different power curve but i haven't played high level so i can't really speak to how wonky it gets or where it gets wonky right um because invariably when you're in high level play there's just so many options and it's just it's difficult as a dm to plan for what the, the characters can do you know it's bad enough when they they pull a surprise on you at level three <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah then you're supposed to have them grounded so to speak both literally and figuratively, yeah, figuratively yeah yep. Thunder, yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure about the question you just had you just raised you have a full table of other players would be npcs so I'm I'm kind of a um a little I'm not sure exactly what the question is on that one. If you well, just... I think one situation is that you have a bunch of players, and all of a sudden there's one friend of yours, or friend of another player who wants to come and see how it is to to game, so to speak, mm -hmm. but will not be a permanent member of the 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 party. And and that way, sometimes I've taken them to play an NPC or 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 someone who just tags along a little bit in detail. So right. so so that might be you. There's various things that you can have them lose, and you can have like followers. And and Jay, you have let's, they have followers and all sorts of stuff. Well, in, uh, yeah, and some henchmen. Okay. Well, let's yeah. let's take this example. Okay. December fifth, Thursday night. I'm calling it the Heroes of Greyhawk Night because uh, hopefully Alan Groey will be there as well. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but Anna's going to be coming over because she's going to be at PAX and she's going to be adventuring with us, with my group. For and, like, a, yeah, a, yes. a temporary thing, so to speak. Yes, yeah, so yep. she, I, I created a character for her that fits right into the group mm -hmm. uh, with a whole background already. It's, she's a 5'5", five, five, uh, Sylvan Elf Ranger Mage. Okay. 
mm-hmm. and uh, given her the background and all. And that character will interact with this group. It's called the Windborn. It's out of Altamira. The name of the adventure is the Outcast. And we'll see, you know, Bill's doing some custom terrain stuff features up for it. It's going to be great. But I've taken that character and we have what I call, I usually have what's called a character limit. So the limit on this party is going to be 10. It's actually going to be 11 because Bill's only going to be there until 9 p.m. Then he's got to go. So <laughs> I'm not going to count Bill's character. I'll, so we have multiple characters based because we play this really wonky style where Thursday night I'm going to have two players there. And then this group, they're each going to have three characters are playing just the way it works. And because mm-hmm. we have a pool of character, adventuring characters. So I'll have one NPC. Anna's will be count. It will be a PC. Bill will have one. And all my other players will have two. Ten. You know, that's the way it works. So um, that's kind of how the flexibility is in our game. I don't, I'm not a one for one guy. I know 5e works, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, now they have these henchmen, right? Or they call them sidekicks. What are they called? They're called right? sidekicks. And okay. it's, it kind of harkens back to third edition where you had these NPC classes, but I think they're a little more, you know, they're a little more uh, fit into the fifth edition paradigm better. And it, they're very, very simple. And actually, you know, it essentially becomes a stat block, and you could turn them into a full character if you wanted to. And they're great. I think they're great for if someone wants to, like, guest star an adventure or wants to just try the game out and not be burdened by a full character class because they, they're kind of like they're very, they're very focused about what they can do. Um, I've just started using them because that just came out with that new uh, box set they came out with the, to – added on to the starter set mm-hmm. that they're doing that was a target at first. I think it's now available everywhere. And yeah, there's some interesting things with that. I think also another option is uh, Stronghold and Followers from Matt Coville does a different path to that where you can have followers. And I believe they're kickstarting or maybe the Kickstarters ended, I can't remember which, for Kingdoms and uh, Warfare, which will be kind of like... Uh, nation level stuff for high you know for high level play oh, i think system i i well he he has his own combat system i think it's more abstract than battle system okay uh but you know he's done some version of this for quite a while and he, he's going to codify it for fifth but essentially what it is is i know he he loved birthright and so i think that the kingdoms of warfare book is basically his way of bringing birthright back into fifth edition D. and stuff for all of that yeah, yeah, and so like there's a, there's a yeah. lot of different ways to handle this. I think the stronghold and followers is much more about more like henchmen mm-hmm. type stuff, but they're still not full on player characters like you would have in first edition. They're a little more abstract, and the, okay. but they have you have a method to bring them in as a full character if someone dies, for example. Um, Neat. So yeah, it, it, it's it, 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 there's I a like lot the, of different things in that. I liked it. I that is a huge positive for me with the five e. I mean, because, you know, we run henchmen. We have henchmen in some of the groups. Henchmen Mm -hmm. are developed. uh, They don't just go out and hire them. Henchmen are relationship-developed characters Mm -hmm. that were NPCs that, like, are you know, uh, they've they've attached to a player character. Mm -hmm. We actually had a henchman, and Bill's going to go freak out now. It's the shark's born on here. (laughs) Uh, Carrie Dees, she was a henchman of one character in in, in a group. She's an NPC of mine. She's character neutral. She just said, I've had enough of this. She went, and, I, and she's an NPC now in the Reborn. Another, she just left. I'm done. And now she's our own, She's an NPC I play in another adventuring group, but she's no longer a henchman. So, you know, it happens, you know. It happens yeah. with character neutrals. You can't trust them. So Yeah, uh, my, my group is three people right now. So I have a NPC healer, essentially a sidekick healer, spellcaster, to kind of keep them alive. At, because they started at first level. They just hit third, and I think... If something were to happen to that healer, the party would not be in dire straits. They they have enough resources now where they can take some hits. Um, it, it wouldn't be fun, but they could do it. Now, my you know, you know, when you're talking about how you deal with a guest star, my nephew is going to wants to come and play, but he's going to go off to college here in January. So he's going to I'm helping him design a character that can kind of come in and out of the campaign. You cool. Know, and the, and I'll talk to him about how you know, but you know, like. His background is he loves anime, right? And he, he wants to play a ninja from his favorite anime. So I have to figure out how to translate that into the world of Greyhawk. And, you know, I'm not going to have him as a, you know, anime ninjas are different from 
you know, actual historical ninjas. And so I had to kind of think of like, well, what would this be and where would it be from? And, you know, because I want him to enjoy what he's doing. And, you know, I will find a way to make it Greyhawk. And, and that, you know, that'll be fun just because he's going to eject some different energy into the campaign. And he's going to make me explore an area of Greyhawk I haven't even thought about. You know, um, yeah, one one other thing I did with uh, old player characters that have le were really high level and had a, 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 a kind of a, an established role in the world, I used them as NPCs. And sometimes if the player was around, I could kind of call on the player to come in and play his old character, his or her old character, and mm -hmm. and as an NPC, and I had to kind of fill in what that character knew about and. and well, NPC in that case. So, so we had some 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 kind of good guest starring in this at times. That that was really that was a lot of fun at times to do that. Well, it's and that's uh, it's another sign of a good DM allowing that and figuring out how to do it, and so it doesn't overbalance things, but making it fun because people like change a little times. Hey, it's like a guest yeah. appearance on a TV show almost, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. And uh, a lot of people ask me that question: What do you do? <laughs> and I explained to them. Think of, I, there's no other way to tell them if they don't watch and say, think of a series of episodes of a TV show. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the editing can be bad because yeah. ca someone like Mark may not be here next week and his characters all of a sudden are gone. I mean, you know, right. you gotta, you gotta, t you gotta do something about that, but that's just the way it is, you know? So it, it's like, it's like that scene from the original gamers movie where the guy isn't there to play his character. Yeah. So the character sometimes is in the scene and sometimes not. Right. And when, exactly. he's there, he just, it, yeah. when he's there, he just has that thousand yard stare and does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh. yeah, it's a bit like running, instead of having a TV series, you have a, a you go to the theater and, and you have a, a TV series run on the theater live. So, so sometimes things don't work out that well and, and you get like hiccups and stuff, but Absolutely. you have to, to deal with them. And, and Yeah, it, 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 it's... Sort of like episodic television, but only it's done live and it's more like uh, improvisational theater thrown in there, you know, where, you know, you'll throw a situation and then you see what they do. <laughs> you know, and, Absolutely. It, so, so, guys, I have to bring this up. Leonard was like kind of shocked about my graffiti. That was really weird, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, 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 I guess he wasn't used to, to, to uh, doing stuff like that. I think it's, that was it's funny. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's Leonard. You, you, you don't know how someone's going to take something. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing yeah. it as an homage. He's like, my character wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I will say, my my understanding of some of the older players in this game, they're very protective of their characters and where they've been and what they yeah. do. And I think part of that is because some of them lost control of those characters. You know, like. Robert Koontz doesn't really control Robolar anymore, and Gary did not control Mordenkainen. Yeah. You know, though he did, though he was able to control others, and it's kind of painful to have someone else write your character or make them do things that you know that character would never do. True. True. Yeah. Right. And so I don't think it necessarily was that he was ticked at you specifically. It's just more of that's just a react a gut yeah. reaction to. That's not what I did. Yeah, you know? or Liam. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're absolutely correct. I I was trying to pay homage to to him uh, with Liam, and because you know, once again, and I, he probably is glad that the character you know went off onto other planes and stuff before the wars, as it was out of the Circle of Eight, because you know he didn't have to. You know, he hated that stuff. So, you know, I'm but, not a huge fan of the wars personally. Yeah. You, know? you know, it's yeah. just it was never something that I was. You know, it was something I endured and yeah. you know dealt with. And you know, frankly, the nice thing about living Greyhawk when we, when I was in the height of that is that was post wars. At least there was a new normal, right? And you know, it, and now I get to say, well, it didn't happen in my campaign because I'm running in five seventy five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I'm I'm just doing a restart basically on mine and. I don't, I, I, unlike Anna, who has this contiguous or contiguous campaign, at least for her personally as the DM, or your group having this big long thing, I've been much more episodic in mine. Uh -huh. And depending on what group is together, I may or may not use the same history. Like I have a plan for introducing Dragonborn into this specific campaign right now, and there's going to be a big reveal, and they're going to be much more like the Drower in the original One E system. 
where they're going to be something that appears and not well known. Yeah, almost legendary. Uh, yeah, well, not even legendary. Like I said, not known. Mm-hmm. And you know, you you would have to really dig deep to have any information on this. But I may go a completely different route. I have like five or six different ways I can introduce them into the game. And I and this one was just a spontaneous one that came up in play. And I said, oh, this makes sense for this game. But my next Greyhawk campaign, if it doesn't involve the same people, might go a different route. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and it just yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, something I would I've been tinkering with the idea of doing it, and I think I, w- I want to start doing it sometime is to to realize that I will probably be at three or four conventions a year. So I would love to to simply have an adv- make an adventure for each convention that I run that advances that that tells a story in my ga- in my campaign, and I will have pre-made so they will basically play all the the participant to play will play NPCs in my campaign, mm-hmm. and and. As characters, and they will tackle a mission or do something that is important with the story of, of my world. So, so they will run a political assassination mission, or they will guard some minor, or, exactly something minor, something minor like killing some. <laughs> exactly, well, yeah, exactly. Do, do something Whatever. important. Yeah, do something <laughs> important, and 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 I will have all. They will they they will not sit and roll up characters. They will be simply. NPCs and or P- personalities and monsters in my c- campaign, and we will play it out during like a four-hour slot or something, and yeah. and that way that will create Fritz. stories for my campaigns, for my campaign. I, I, I was toying with that idea. That's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. So uh, that's what I have here prepped for the, the Friday mm-hmm. of Pax Unplugged, one of the two adventures. Yeah. I'm working finalizing the second one. These are all player characters, or M- almost all of them. Player characters or non-player characters in my campaign, yeah. you know, that we use. And uh, the Kitano, you'll get to use one of these wonderful people. Fritz, even, if you want. So, uh, right. you know. And this, cool. again, comes back to when you're building your campaign and you're building your town or whatever is – what is the purpose? Like, if Anna's going to go and do a convention piece, you know, how detailed is the town going to need to be for that? Does she need to know this stuff? What do the players know? And I, yeah, that, that's, yeah. yeah. For, for me, that's one of the, the key things is that if I do this, I need to know who the players are like a month be, before so I can send them the details so they will be well prepped. And they will be kind of they will know who their NPCs so they can, that, who they're going to play, and they will have the knowledge of that that creature they're going to play, and 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 the mission at hand and the situation. So we can sit down at the table and go, so to speak, for four hours or something. Uh, uh, I know that's way too prepared. I think you're just gonna have <laughs> no, to, no, no. But that's that's uh, how I want to do the, it. You, you slap the the yeah. character sheet in front of them. No, with no, 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 no. I would say. Yeah. Figure nope. it out, guys. No, nope. no, I, I want to, to, and and now I'm, I'm going to run D and D in a castle next year, and that, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to prep for nice. that those four or five days for nine months. Are you going to do five E or are you going to do Pathfinder? That will be five E, I think. Yeah, okay. I think it will be five E. So I, I, I I'm think reading, that, yeah, part of the prep is a... to read all the rule books for five E. I'm <laughs> doing that right now. So and and I, I will prep for literally nine months. I've already I've detailed four, four or five different scenarios that I, I we can run. So I will let the 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 players. Hopefully, they will be coming in the, the not too long. So get a chance, and then I will start nailing them down, and and so I will I will prep, and I will I will not prep like they will be this adventure. I will prep the area, and then I will have this situation when the game starts, and then we go from there. Yeah, and I'll say I just did with my wife. We did a, a charity event that happens every year here in Portland. It's a mirror yeah. of an event that started in Chicago, and it's called Level Eater, and they're playing Five E. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it and. It's you know it was an amazing thing because we just literally we were handed NPCs yeah. and we weren't really given a whole lot other than the stat block and what yeah. they, and the name and then we immediately figured out what our personalities were at the table and we just went to town yeah. and that and it was a little crazy you know yeah. we had a really good group of people to do that <laughs> yeah. with and yeah. I you know I had a lot of fun but you know you have to have a really good DM that can roll with the punches. Yeah, you know, I, it, I was it, yeah, yeah, I was thinking of doing the the as a convention adventure. Do one 
well prepped one for more high mid to high level and an important mission and then do another one when you just take drunk guys at a bar or whatever so you can just come in grab one you don't have to know anything and and yeah. you just have something happening and and also yeah we were like third level yeah. so it was like that's something you yeah. can pick up and go but just like play ev have... everyday people yeah if you handed me a 10th level character at a convention, I'd look at you and kind of go, what? Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I mean. That needs to be prepped, well prepped. Or right. or I will simply say that you can play ordinary p villagers in a village and then things just unfold. You don't need to know anything and, and you just play whatever. The, the I actually bad. like, yeah. uh, the thing I like is asking people questions. Like I saw a person who took the Traveler game engine, you know, the science fiction game, and he just reduced it down to its, its mechanical aspects and he had this whole thing where you were in a village and your skill set was name three things your character can do and that and you had like a one two and three on the skill you know, traveler. <laughs> wow yeah. and, and and so and you built a person around it and then you went and you had this whole thing and it was very very rules light mm -hmm. and so you know that kind of thing can also be an interesting exercise if you give them just the bare bones but like you said if you're doing like there's a mission there's the story yeah. yeah, you're going to give them a pre-gen and you would like well, them to... Yeah, yeah. then, yeah, then yeah. it has to be prepped. Yeah, so, it, so, it, there needs to be some sort of prep. Yeah, you know, but you have to find that balance because you're not always going to get a month. No, no, that's the, that's the thing. So, yeah. so I if I, I want to so so I if I'm going to do a convention, I will probably want to see if I can do both. Both one just easy going, don't need to have any prep whatsoever. It's more like having a fun situation that can happen in my Greyhawk campaign without any with just normal mm -hmm. hillbillies or whatever it is, and and then you can have one kind of dedicated. This is going to be an historic event that we're going to play out over four hours. I um, mean, you have you have Carlos coming on your show uh wednesday we're gonna talk yeah. about that yeah that will be but, will, this will be the mainstay of the show i think so now doesn't we're digging he, into it doesn't he kind of run like uh stuff at those conventions that are a, a, a continuous storyline and people just that's drop the, in that's the yeah he, he has some some really cool adventures and 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 we need to ask him in detail how he he makes this handy work so to speak and the, the cool thing is now we get into it this is a lot of my prep for 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 wednesday that i'm kind of re yeah. regurgitating here at the at the moment so to speak. all right well, so, yeah. well let's talk about uh since it's almost uh it's almost we we we, we filled the last half hour <laughs> So yeah, I, like yeah, I have a in lot there. of bunch of stuff that I want to talk about that has nothing to do with the discussion we had have had so far. So yeah, yeah. But so uh, but we yeah. have uh, while we talk about what's going on and uh, we'll, we'll link that in with Carlos uh, mm -hmm. in, um, yeah. in a second. Yeah. So uh, what do you want, Brian? What do you got going on, man? Um, I got my uh, biweekly Greyhawk campaign is going to uh, kick back. I took a I couldn't do it today, so we kicked it to next week. Okay. And uh, because we also want to avoid the Thanksgiving holidays because some of our people are out of town. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, you know, so we're going to do that. But they just leveled up the third. So it's going to be very, very interesting. And I, I'm, uh, they're in the dungeon. So I had to kind of come up with a way that they suddenly got all these special abilities. And I think I'm going to continue my dream sequence stuff where, uh, you know, essentially what I've done in my campaign is I'm going to incorporate a piece of the HP Lovecraft Dreamlands with a little bit of uh, Neil Gaiman Sandman thrown in. Hmm. Um, and that's gonna have a huge impact because I have a character that's lost part of her memory to a green hag. And that hag stole that oh, I love hags. So, because I, in, my, in my campaign, fey creatures and including elves cannot access the Dreamlands. Okay. And they can't. And yeah, they, they don't they, sleep properly. They, so, they don't. Yeah. They don't sleep like a, a like other mortals, and so that hag needed that memory to get into the dreamlands. Ah. and they're going to have to go there to get it back if she wants that memory back. Oh, cool. So that's yeah. and that's based around Salt Marsh, correct? Uh, yeah, because I, I have uh, Seton is the place I started. Instead of going west to Salt Marsh, my characters went north to Oakhurst. And they're now in the, a dungeon inside the Dreadwood. Well, you're and, gonna, awesome. You're going to get yeah. a custom. You're going to get an invitation to a to an upcoming Legends and Lore then that we're sure. going to talk about in a little bit as well. Cool. Another thing, yes. So uh, perfect. Uh, that that is so cool. I mean, you're you're you're. Um, 
I want we Anna and I want to show all the different types of things you can go off of the salt marsh. So we're mm-hmm. gonna we're gonna have a, we're gonna have an episode called Salt Marsh Then and Now. You mm-hmm. know, and so we're gonna have we'll have you tell those stories. Well, Brian Sublime tell those his stories too with his version mm-hmm. of Salt Marsh, and then I'll talk about the old school stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. Great Uncle Mike will talk about the, writing the book. So it's cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other part of it is is you know I haven't really been working on my heraldry lately, but I've had some ideas. I'm gonna hopefully get back to that a little bit and cool. pump some more out. You know, I, just, I haven't done anything. Speaking recently. of that, <laughs> dun dun dun. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yes, I. Uh, yes, <clears throat> I may need to get uh, something, but we'll talk about that later on. So, mm. I don't want to put that okay. out. There. So, Anna, what are you doing? <laughs> I, this is these are busy days. It's celebration time in 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 Anna mapping world. Uh, so so. If I, uh, GH maps have a celebration time. It's 20 years and some months since uh, since I started my Greyhawk mapping project. So so that's but that celebration has been going on because that's when I repurposed my patron. But my patron is two years old, almost to the day. So that's another reason to celebrate. And my face group, Facebook group, the Flannies Geographical Society, just had 2,000 members. So that was another one. So I've been been kind of yeah. What I started as uh, when I joined Facebook like what was it like nine years ago roughly just after I moved to California I've been on Facebook for like a year but I haven't posted anything so nevertheless now I'm going to use Facebook so I, I made this little group to help me um, see if I can find someone who was interested in my Greyhawk maps and now it's a 2000 member group and awesome help and discussions and so thank you everyone who's been helping me out over the years in 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 that Facebook group it's it's been a godsend and to have the easy access to the audience, you can ask questions, you can show things and, and so on and so forth. So so, so three main reasons to, to celebrate. So I've been kind of putting out, um, I, I'm working in secret on, I did a map that was kind of uh, my take on the Darlene map, so to speak. I call mm-hmm. it the, the Flannies, the classical edition. So I made, I made that one like five years ago or something just with my terrain, but with the same information that was on the Darlene map and my terrain on. It, same cities, towns, and then nothing else. I only put the heraldry from the, the original booklet on there as well, my version of the heraldry. Now I mm-hmm. realize that I've re edited the terrain and there is a bunch of changes in the terrain itself. So I realize it's time to do a new version of it. So I created that version. So there is now a 2019 edition of the Flannies classical map mm. that is nice. uh, 36 by 48 inches. That's a standard. You can go to various of these printing places online and actually print your own version. Cost like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Nice. You can get it printed. So, so, and I even made the each the settlement symbols and text is larger, so it's actually much more much easier to read even when you print it. So, so it's a, and it comes in PDF or JPEG version with a little bit of bleed. So it's actually it's made to be printed. And there is a four thousand pixel version that you can use if you just want to use it on your iPad or on your computer or digitally. So that was one of the the things that I'm I released. And then I speaking about heraldry i did the i had one i have a lot of, of little heraldry and stuff that i done for my own campaign and one that did that i kind of like was for the the city of freeborough that is in furyundi but it's a independent city in the middle of furyundi that was freeborough so i did a heraldry for that one like 10 12 years ago or something and and so now I released it to, not only to my patrons because today I celebrate so I release it on Patreon for everybody. So that one was there too. And and it's kind of an interesting little it was a it's a blue shield that has the, the city, same city symbol that Greyhawk City has, because there's Greyhawk, Divers, Yalpa, and a bunch of others have that symbol. So I took it at that's the IRD symbol for city. 
so 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 that was the great kingdom kind of symbol for for city that's why it ended up on on multiple heraldry in various different versions mm -hmm. so so the the i took that that freeburg was originally a, one of of the great kingdom's frontier towns so to speak that's how it started on the plains they built a little stronghold there out in the middle of the plains along the at river just to 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 kind of solidify their their hold of it so the original was was the the, the blue shield the, the blue great kingdom shield with the white city symbol on top of it and then it was added because this was part in the days when Furyundi was under the vice royalty of Ferrand so that symbol has a special crown that symbolizes the vice uh, royalty of Ferrand you can see it on the shields of divers and Furyundi so I put one of these crowns on top saying that it's a city that belonged to the vice royalty of Ferrand because that was the how it originally started and then he had three of these uh, golden kind of coins under it that Greyhawk City and several other cities have as a symbol of wealth and 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 trade and stuff. So so that became my my shield for for the um, the city of of Freeborough. So that was cool. one, and and the other one that I'm going to release shortly is uh, very shortly, hopefully like tomorrow or or, or in, within the next two days, a, a version of that river map that it's the yeah. the river system that you it's colored and and each river has a width depending on what type of, of vessel you can use so so you can see where you can use the, so a navigation map that exactly tells you it's what, a navigation yeah. map of it yeah and that will also be part in full scale for the uh, 576 map will come with a detailed river map that goes with it nice, nice. Yep. so that's part of it's it's in there in the, in the package so to speak so that area around the near deep and greyhawk drives me insane what which way those things flow i can't never i have <laughs> yeah, no idea so i have to put the, the, i'm putting <laughs> i'm putting the the um I, i've been studying the map so much now that i know what direction they flow but i'm i'm have to put arrows that's the big thing they, they will not be flow arrows on the first one that comes out because it will take me a week just to put all the flow arrows in there, <laughs> arrows in there but they will be I, I will i will take my 40 50 60 hours watch netflix and just draw these damn flow arrows for 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 uh, the major ones will have it but that will be about it but all the small little tributaries and stuff will have their theirs eventually and basically all the rivers that are depicted on my maps are big enough that you can take a rowboat and you can kind of navigate around so to speak the, the, there's the small this tiny little creeks are not on the map right. so or everything that is uh, on the map is like at least 25 30 yards across or something like that so like 100 feet across that that's roughly the the, the smallest that is on the map and the biggest rivers like the Belverdiva, Belverdiva and the the um the Nesser and others they are like a mile across or more Mm -hmm. so so they are really wide so some so of them more like the mississippi and exactly like meaning some of them they go across the continent they probably have the, like the nesser probably has it's like the nile or, or the mississippi or the the the, the volga or, or something like that in 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 scope so it's like a it's a mile across you can you can take an ocean going sailboat and go up there and navigate it so yeah and that's actually detailed in the uh, the books. There is like a, a the chapter about the rivers at the end. And if you read the text, you can get a lot of details. So yep. I use that for my my research. Oh, so based off of, uh, just based on what you said, because I'm a terrible admin of my own Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cannon Fire Facebook group. A, yeah. A, a great walk, Greyhawk resource. We 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 just hit 1,100 a while back ago. Yeah, so we're growing, you know, um, absolutely. Pretty, pretty good, a good clip. Um, we're gonna be, we're gonna continue to publish the World of Greyhawk, republish the World of Greyhawk comic strips by your co-host uh, Greyhawk Mike. And uh, there's been just a lot of activity from people put, putting up their art, their ideas. So if you're interested in interacting with other fans that want to share stuff and you know, or ask questions. Come and join us over at the, the Cannon Fighter Facebook group. And here's and here's our Greyhawk Online Discord. I just popped that link up too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that that's actually associated with uh, Greyhawk Online, mm -hmm. which is a great website. If you haven't seen it, that is uh, it hosts the Earth Journal currently. They're they're back to publishing. If you're if you're not aware of that, and uh, you can also hit the Greyhawk Wiki. Uh, am I saying that right? Wiki. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there. And uh, that is 
back online and being updated um, daily, if not daily. And if you want to be part of that, you know, and want to be part of that project, go talk to Christoph about that. We'd love to have some help. So there, that's enough of my plugging. Thunder, I'm putting up the picture of L4. It'll switch to L5 for you on the screen after Deep Delve and Door, okay? There's a whole bunch of other supplements. You got to find them all. There's the L4 Leonard Lakofka and then L5 uh, Croton will come up after that. All right, so I got we got a swamping busy week. Tomorrow night, Mark's back mm -hmm. with his group Slap. Uh, he continues Gates of Firestorm Peak. It starts at 6 p.m. EST, usually runs three hours. So that is tomorrow night. Wednesday night, we have the newest Legends and Lore. I have that on the, uh, let me, I should have, I should have done this ahead of time. I'm not planning. I'm not planning <laughs> as well as I should. It's, it's on the end, it's on the end screen, but let me pop this yep. up real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's Legends yep. and Lore next on Wednesday uh, with, um, with Carlos, our special guest, Carlos Lacing, myself, Anna, and Mike. And yep. it's called Write Your Own Greyhawk Adventure. So yes, you will go deep, dig deeper in. And Carlos is an expert because he's written a hell of a lot of, of, of adventures. And he's published them too, which means that he had kind of polish them in a way that you normally don't need to do for your home games and 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 it's kind of cool so so together i think that mike uh, carlos mike jay and me we will have combined more than a century of of, of yeah. making greyhawk adventures together so we can probably come with with some cool ideas i have a, a bunch of plot ideas and stuff that i'm going to see if i can we can dig them into and and, and kind of pick them up and, uh, and, and come up with ideas. carlos is the best for doing that because yes, carlos actually fantastic. publishes them yep. and i have every published module of carlos's set in the scroller Plus mm -hmm. all the ones he's done for me, plus our yep. joint one that we are doing together. So uh, we'll yep. have a lot of stuff to discuss. Hopefully give you everyone some tips on what to do. Um, mm -hmm. And and like I said, this doesn't have to be an exercise in cannoneering. So, yeah, no, no, sorry, no, no, no. Sorry. It's, it's, it's an exercise it's, in enjoying Greyhawk. Exactly. And making and your own. Exactly. Making it yep. your own, just like Gary said. So that's what's going on Wednesday, Thursday night. We start a new adventure. And it is called, um, oh God, I don't want to, anyone on <laughs> who's my, in my group, cover your ears. It's, <laughs> it's called The Fog. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts in Hardby, Hardby, right on the, right on the wharf. So you can get an idea already. Uh, Are you ripping off Stephen King again? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's oh, just. It, excuse me. You're you're, uh, you're you're doing plagiarism as the sincerest form of flattery, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And it just exactly. does like it's a one nighter because we're going to be off for Thanksgiving week for our game, and then Anna will be here the next week for a one nighter as well. So I have to I had to do a one nighter. I had to figure out something kind of campy. So that's what it is for for Thursday. But the, I got the next three gabins already set too. So next week is we're going to delve into the magic user class, which everyone goes, that's ah, you know, it's a base magic user. But what we've done with the magic user class, how we've enhanced it, how Alan has enhanced it with his custom Greyhawk Mage class. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the spells in this book, which I think it's underutilized. All the Greyhawk wizard spells in here. So we're going to do a lot of cool things with, with the mage. The week after that, uh, the, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, we'll be on. That'll be the next time we'll be on that week. Uh, it's, we're going to do the, our gab, and it's going to be called "That's Not in Greyhawk." All right. And uh -oh. this was this was Jason Zavada's idea. He came to me and said, "So why don't you do a, a, a gabin on?" I I always like running under mountain in Greyhawk. Uh, talk about stuff like that. So I was like, okay. So we're gonna do modules that we have that are published modules. They aren't Greyhawk, but we put them there and what we did and how we did it. So that'll be that. It'll be that week. And then the Sunday after that, after PAX ends, just like last year, Brian, I'm gonna do my experiences at PAX Unplugged for Gabin 74. After that whole weekend is done and I'm exhausted, and I will do that with a bunch of pictures. Uh, so we'll have a lot of cool stuff. We, uh, and I got to figure out when we're going to do the next um, Legends and Lore after Carlos yes. because mm -hmm. you got the night before Thanksgiving, which is a tough night for a lot of people. And then yeah. Anna is traveling the next week to PAX. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, why that, that's the, that's the tricky one. So it might not be until Wednesday after PAX. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we're we're going to try and figure it out. 
Yeah, we uh, will have we will have yeah. a, a, a date on Wednesday. We will have we can announce when the next one after that will be. But there's yeah, there's both conventions and and yeah. holidays. So yeah. So there's a, a boatload of content coming up, guys. Thank you so very much for hanging in there. I know we started like 10, 15 minutes early because that's just the way Leonard comes on. He just wants to talk. I know. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so I know we yeah. have him for a limited amount of time. So I, I, I yep. started it early and we had him for like an hour and a half, which was great. And uh, uh, Brian, thank you so very much for coming on. Anna, thank you so much for coming on. This is oh, cool. You're welcome. A great yep. discussion. You mm -hmm. know, um, I yep. love, I love just whenever I can get someone of this a legendary status. Yes, on, uh, that's awesome. Yep. You got you got to jump on it, and uh, and he was so gracious to come on, and uh, and we'll go from there. And guys, I'm gonna go to a and yeah. Thank you, thank you all. Like I said, if you want something that came up tonight, I'll ask Leonard if if he I don't the um, Leia Keel. I don't think I can. He may he may allow this to get released. He may allow these after to get the released. con after the, it's been run at the convention. That's when we can ask him, and yeah, for there Kiel. might be a chance yeah. to the, to to get all this stuff yeah. published on 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 Greyhawk yeah. Online. The first. old Restonford stuff. Perfect. He may allow that to go. This stuff. He yeah, may. yeah. We'll so, see. But yeah. once it's been run at the convention, then might it yep. might be um, perfect to. to What's up, Skagath? Good I really to see hope you. that we can get it. Yeah. Hey, and Skagath, we didn't talk about a single monk tonight either, so you should be happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we have I'm plenty have, of Linda Kauf get so And yeah. I'm going to have two monks in my campaign oh. next week. <laughs> yes! Uh, so high mobility characters that are glass cannons. Awesome! That's so super <laughs> awesome. Guys, yeah. if you haven't already, which you probably all have, there's some uh, places I am. You, uh, I, I'm painting myself with Twitter and Instagram and uh, and 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 uh, YouTube and and of course Twitch is where. If you just follow me on Twitch, that is more than enough, guys, because this is where this is where uh, this is where we do most of our game, you know, game discussion. All right, thank you all. Let's uh, let's go to our exit screen here. I know I didn't run a lot of ads for my sponsors, but they'll they'll get over it, right? So you know, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, oh, they will. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Might get so. called into the, the witch. Oh, I hope not. Yes. I hope not. <laughs> so, thank you all. Oh, dude, I'm. Uh, I got. I got this freaking stream deck plug plugged in like crazy. Well, I just gotta get. I gotta get a couple more in here. So. So are we actually still live on the show? They can hear us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you can talk. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, that was fun. Yeah. See that you tomorrow fantastic. night, guys. Yep. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday this week coming up. Got a lot going on. This is not a touchscreen. Stop touching your monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Get through this and then we'll uh, call it in. And Gates of Firestorm Peak, man. That is a brutal, brutal adventure. And of and course, it's a, written yeah. it's written by Bruce Cordell, so why would it be anything else? And that's what Mark's running with Slap on his Monday Night Group. That's what he's doing. Yeah. You are on a timer in that bad boy. And yeah, the monsters are not dumb. Do not think you're going to be able to get a rough shot over there. Be smart. I guess I say stuff that gets misinterpreted all the time. I hear it all the time. <laughs> oh, I, I just let it slide. Ah, come on, I love NBA. I had dinner with uh, Kirk for NBA two nights ago. Plus, I got a whole new bunch of new NBA I'm showing Thursday. All right, guys. Wow. See you soon. Have a good one. Good night. <laughs>